Joe? Joe? No, we're six feet, I think. And you can take it off. Because I don't think there's not, not too much I have to say. Well, so I just said if you weren't here, I can speak to you. Okay. It. It's, uh, according to my watch, it's 1 o'clock, and I've been given the authority to can speak for it. start Joe. the meeting. You can speak for it. And a little less competition from the uh, audience. Dan? Excuse me. We can pick you up. Meeting has started. Uh, Thank you for all being here. We do have a quorum of members. Um, I'd like to start the meeting off with a, uh, a, a moment of silence for a dear, very dear friend of mine and uh, a past member of this committee, uh, Joe McFarland. Uh, Joe and I were both members of finance and members of uh, this capital outlay committee for over 10 years. And um, Joe's passing has really gotten me. So if we could just have a moment of silence for Joe. Thank you. Um, our town administrator would like to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for that moment. Um, I, I would also like to add, not only on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, but also on the administration department and myself personally, um, some thoughts about uh, Joe McParland and his service here in, in the town of Harwich. Um, I, and I have to first start by going back to 1988 when I was a um, young a uh, brown-haired college student who was also a representative town meeting member in Braintree, uh, and that's when I first met Joe. So when I moved down here to Harwich uh, uh, almost six years ago, I went to uh, what I call my Dunkin' Donuts at the Mobile, and I bumped into Joe. And we had a great conversation, and we reminisced, and I said, oh, I didn't know you vacationed here in Harwich. And he informed me that he no longer vacationed in Harwich and that he was living uh, living here. And um, you know, and that's when I found out the breadth and the depth of the service that he offered the town of Harwich, and we're, we're eternally grateful, and we have benefited so much from Joe's service, just like my hometown of Braintree did when, when Joe was there. And I think that's the, the thing I would, uh, I'll always remember about Joe is his devotion to his community, uh, whatever that community was, whether it was Braintree or Harwich, whether it was the Marine Corps, whether it was his profession and the legal profession, um, and... Uh, it is a, with a little sadness today that we meet, uh, and I know that uh, services for Joe are, are taking place as we meet, unfortunately for us. Um, but thank you for the chance to, to recognize Joe and to have some remarks placed on the records of this committee, uh, as you said, which he served so ably for so many years. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So let's start the meeting in honor of Joe because he He'd want this thing to be over quickly <laughs> so uh, he could make other stops. Um, so our first guest is going to be our town clerk. And if you would please step near a microphone or... So we're going to share the microphone, but if, Mr. Chairman, if I could, um, I do um, want to give us uh, the opportunity for you to recognize your newest member. Oh, I'm sorry. I have it on my list. Yep. We have yep. a new member, Selectman Liaison, and it's Martha Donovan. Thank you. Looking and forward it's to it. proof that she is with the Capital Outlay Committee because she's completed <laughs> the conflict of interest law, and that certainly helps us in this committee. Good. And I'm sure, Mr. Chairman, as a segue, it's going to help our town clerk as well that oh, to, sure. to know that everyone's in compliance. Um, she's the first one to tell you if you're not. So <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to do is, in, in, in the spirit of the other uh, presentations that have happened, I've told each of the department heads that when they present, uh, we're, we're going to be metaphorically right now during the COVID surge, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, but I am here in concert and in support uh, of our town clerk and her request. Um, you have the form in front of you. Uh, I'll defer to our clerk, but I can tell you that she's going to tell us that we need it. I agree with that. Uh, and it's something that's going to help the town. But with that, I would turn it over to my 
colleague in government, our town clerk. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for having me here today. Just a little bit of history. The last time we bought voting machines in town was in 2008. Right. And the machines that we have have worked very well. Um, however, they're going to become, um, as I've been informed by the company, um, the parts are going to be a little harder to get as we go forward and technology is moving ahead a lot faster than, than even the, the machines that we have today. So eventually, that's why I thought it would be good to put it into the capital plan. Uh, I would hope that um, the town will see fit to, you know, approve new voting machines because we're going to be needing them. We do have four precincts, which means I would need four voting machines and also at least one spare in case one of them um, should, you know, have problems. I do right now have two spare machines and four voting machines. With the federal census that just took place in 2020, when I'm still working with the state on this one, uh, we have not graduated to five precincts as of yet, but in another few years, with the rapid growth that I've been seeing, we may end up with five precincts in the town of Harwich, which means we will then need another voting machine. So, but for today, I think just four with one spare would be good if we could get two spares in case we do within the next 10 years, you know, do we want to plan that far ahead? I'm not sure. Okay. And Mr. Powers, do you have anything that you would like to say? Just that administration, I support this request, uh, given that it gets to the effective and efficient uh, running of our elections and it's bringing us into line with what the state is expecting towns to use for tabulation uh, systems. Fiscal year 23 to me is the most opportune time to purchase it because it's far enough in advance of a presidential election that the clerk and staff should have plenty of time to work out the kinks, uh, which are inevitable with the technology. Um, is it the same, same manufacturer as the old machine? Um, there are two companies out there that, that provide, so I would imagine it'd have to go to bid, um, depending on what company the town clerk at that point in time or the town would choose to go forward. But the company that I've been dealing with for the past, well, at least since 2008, yeah. has been absolutely wonderful. Good. Anita, is it, uh, are they 15000 a piece? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't really looked into the price. I'm going to guess that it's probably a little bit um, between fifteen and twenty a piece. I would guess. So, in essence, uh, because of the the rate of everything going up now. Yeah. Right. Sure. Um, my suggestion is then fifteen is the low end. I would rather see a projected cost at the high end. So, I would say twenty a piece. Yes. Make it an even hundred, okay. and uh, this way we uh, don't have to go back and get more. Does the committee buy that? Yeah. I, I think that's a good idea, Rich. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Yes. You're good. Yeah, I agree with that. You're good. Okay. So and we'll make the projected cost. Joe, if you want to uh, amend your uh, yes. sheet, absolutely. Can Thank I? If I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Martha. Oops, sorry. Uh, can, it, so if it's less than twenty. Can you buy five? Is that how it works? Or you have to only, you can only buy four. How does that work? Like she if you could get all five in for 100,000, would you do that? She requested four voting machines plus one spare, five. One okay. Spare, that would be so, and the, the projected cost at five would be 75. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of low, that's the low end of the range. Right. And I'd rather request the high end of the range yeah, I was just asking because there wasn't a number of machines on here, so. Right. Well, like I had said, we have four precincts. Right. So I'm required to have at least four machines with at least one spare, right. if it's possible. Yeah. You know, right now I have two spare, but, you know, it depends on, you know, it depends on the quality of the machine at that point in time. Okay. Anita, are these, is there any interface between what an old machine can do and what the new machine can do? Should the old machine... If you had two of the new one break. Right. Could you use the old one? Right. No. Okay, so it's. Right. You just have to set it aside. 
That's correct. So then you start using paper. <laughs> okay. Been there, done that. I understand. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, if I could, that's also where the concept of the spare comes in. Mm -hmm. um, as our clerk can tell us, they're heavily regulated by the elections division, rightfully so. And so if a machine goes down, they may be able to avail themselves of the spare, but they need to treat it as though it's one of the five machines. So she could have five in circulation for any election, which is the smart way to go. And I guess my, analysis, my analogy is, I've got four tires on my car and I got a spare. Mm -hmm. right. But if my spare doesn't have any air in it, I'm down to four. So I got a problem that I can't get a fifth. Will the vendor have the ability to supply us with, with the spare if we need a spare because our spare is down? Um, before I had a spare, yeah. we had the vendor drove all the way down from Salem, New Hampshire and met one of my election workers at the bridge to get another machine so he could come back to Harwich and we could finish our election. Okay. So the you. answer would be yes. Wonderful. That's yes. good. And, th and they're a good company to work with, but that's my experience with that's them. That's good. Will you be here for the decision making of who, who my, gets the bid if there's two? Probably not. Who's going to do the, the bid and make the decision? Yeah. Okay. So, well, the bid, any procurement has to go through administration. Um, with, with me being the chief procurement officer. Right. Uh, a, as in this case with any other, we'd rely upon the expertise of the department head. Um, having said that, Anita and I first met many, many years ago at a clerk's conference, so we're both fully aware of the, the marketplace. Uh, and to an earlier question, we can develop the proposals so that it is not just a price proposal, meaning the town right. can give um, criteria that relates to pre-existing relationships and ability to service and everything else. So uh, okay. we would be able to, to shape it in a way that we don't, uh, that we can go for the best and not just the low bidder. Um, but the process would be as any procurement is through administration in concert with the, um, with the department head. Uh, in this instance, given the cost we're talking about, the, it would be the board of selectmen that would have to finalize the purchase. When would you expect to, to have it in hand? So we could begin, um, the uh, procurement process right after town meeting in anticipation of the funds being available July 1st. Okay. Um, and if I could, I do want to ask, on the form, you have a date needed of 1 January 2nd, 2023, and I would imagine you're contemplating using that after the 22 elections. Correct. Yep, so we could Correct. also That's time it with that. Okay. That's why we did it that way. Yep. Anything else? Uh, uh, Anita, do, 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 the, do the machines have internet access or firmware, software upgrades via the internet, do you know? No. So, the, so they're completely standalone and can't be, okay. And the old machines don't have any trade-in value, I imagine, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Thank you, Anita. Okay. okay. We're good? Okay. Brian? Good. We're good? Yep. Good. Anita, thank you and good luck. Thank yes. you very much. Well deserved. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Chairman and members, um, we uh, next have uh, our, our water, wastewater superintendent and, and uh, commission members here. And you have in your packet separate applications, meaning there are applications for water versus applications for wastewater. And, Mr. Chairman, I would defer to you and our superintendent as to which you want to hear first. Didn't recognize. <laughs> the mask and no hair. It, how unique. <laughs> he looks so young. He is. He is. <laughs> he is young. <laughs> okay, Dan, it's up to you. And uh, take us through your requests, please. All right, so I guess we'll start with water. Um, fiscal year 23, um, I believe it should be the first in your packet, is the request for two vehicle replacements. We're proposing to replace an existing 2010 Ford Ranger and a 2013 Ford Taurus with two Ford F-150s. So Dan, if I could, I believe in the package you have the first two forms you see are the wastewater applications, then it begins with water, right. and the first water one is the one that Dan's making reference to. No, in our packets we have 30 million and then 2.5 million. Yep, that should, if you look at the top, I think that's the, the wastewater applications. That's wastewater. I understand. And then right after sure. that, but it's the, the third request we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So the caveat to the $90,000 is the fact that we were trading in two trucks, one car, one truck. One car, one truck. And we're um, assuming we don't know the trade-in value now. We don't know the trade-in values now. We do have um, two estimates that were provided by DPW for the proposed vehicle purchases, which are just under 90000 mm -hmm. Can these, uh, how many miles do you have on each? Are they usable by any other department? So the Taurus has about 150,000 miles, um, which only speaks to about half of the picture. That's a retired police cruiser, so it has about 15,000 engine hours on it. So. I would say it's probably beyond its useful life. Um, the Ranger, we've made significant investments keeping it on the road, but if um, there was a department that could repurpose it for a lighter utility, um, I would defer to DPW on right. that. But Okay. So you're looking for 90? Yes. Any questions? Nope. 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 Okay, let's go on. Next, I believe beneath that in your packet should be the fiscal year 24 new well construction. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could, in an effort to save trees and paper, your applications are double-sided in some instances. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the application oh. that just covered the vehicles, That's on the really reverse neat. side of the vehicle information uh, is the, the FY24 new well construction application. Those trees on Main Street are... <laughs> yeah. That's that's just really, they're yeah. really happy. Right. Um, so this builds on uh, an appropriation that was approved last year for new source exploration. Um, I would like to just advise the Capital Outlay Committee, the half a million dollar estimate that was submitted in this form. Um, let's say as a meetings I had a couple weeks ago, we've been drilling um, throughout this year, and it looks like the water quality is going to require additional filtration at the well 10 treatment plant that we have up there. Um, so that half a million dollar price tag will likely go up um, once we determine the additional work that we'll need to filter that um, water. So that would be likely being increased, but until we have some additional information as to the degree of treatment and extent, um, I don't have a better number for you today. Where is that well located? So if you go depot in West Harwich under the highway there, take a right off of Northwest Gate Road, um, it's right almost to the Brewster line. Okay. All right. Should I continue? No, not yet. I'm, I'm getting lost, and it's my fault, between McGovern Municipal HQ Can I just ask for a clarification on something? At the bottom, that last box, how it impacts the budget. Yeah. What is that? Can you explain to me what that all means? Yeah, for the, on the new well construction one? Yeah. Yeah, so that $25,000 that I input for fiscal years 24 through 26 is what I'm anticipating the additional electrical costs would be to run that well. And that would come out of your budget? Yes. Okay. Dan, when you tap in into a new well like this, is when you pump out the water, does it just go into a, the closest water main that's in the vicinity, or do you have to dig a new main to bring it back to somewhere else? So in the instance of um, over by well 10, what we'd be looking to do, the, the area that we're anticipating that the well will be installed, um, we would run a line from that well back to the treatment plant, and then it would just go out the discharge of the existing treatment plant. Okay. So this treatment plant would be what, Lothrop then? Uh, this is the Northwest Gate treatment plant. Northwest, okay. Yeah. So it would go to the sand filtration plant? Yes. And then, okay. So when that plant was built, it was built with room to add two additional pressure filter vessels, so we would look to utilize that space and put those installed there to treat that additional source. So the request is for 23, correct? And on this, it appears in 24. I'm sorry? Yeah, so no. correct. The date needed by, um, no, Mr. Chairman, sorry. The date needed by 
7-1-23 is fiscal year 24. So if you see that line where it says date needed by 7-1-2023, that's the beginning of fiscal year 24. And then if you look at funding request by year, uh, $500,000 in year two. Right. It's also fiscal year 24. But we are voting on 23. So we are voting on applications for the five-year plan. Right. As we've talked about before. Okay, so this is in the second year of the five-year plan. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and if I may, to, to your point, Mr. Chairman, the only item that the uh, water department has that impacts upon the next fiscal year right. is the vehicle replacements that you spoke of earlier. Okay. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, Dan. All right. Also for fiscal year 24, we have a request for $175,000 to continue our pavement management plan. This is to replace. Give me one sec, sorry about that. We, the next one they had would be the FY28 for Route 28 water main replacement. Right. I'll stay in St. Clair. You don't have to sp speak to that one, but I just, if, if that's what the committee members have next, because um, the one that uh, the superintendent was speaking to is the reverse side of that page. And I will add for the record that um, truly paper is a problem because we're hearing from supply sources that paper is becoming a scarcity. So please excuse the double sided, but it is necessary. So would you like me to continue on the water main or the pavement management? The uh, pavement management. So this, um, what we're looking to do with this is repave um, or do an overlay at the T2 well field, which is right off of Depot Road. Um, we had done, I believe it was two or three years ago, we started this plan and we repaved our uh, well field at 196 Chatham Road. So this is a continuation of, of that project. Did you get that 175000 from the highway department? No. That was funded through water and uh, retained earnings. Just seems like a lot of money for that road. For the well field? It's a, there's a lot of pavement back there. <laughs> I've been back there. Yeah. And when we did 196 Chatham Road, that was about 125000 We did coordinate with the DPW, um, and we did go through the county bid for paving. Um, so it was all the same price that DPW pays. So that price could move up or down? It could. This is a place, you know, until we get the bids, fuel, you know, oil, sorry, oil and tar asphalt pricing between now and fiscal year 24, I would say is 100% going to change. And is it just a dirt road right now? Right now, no, it's, it's all paved now, but as it ages, root systems come in, crack and okay. degrades the road. I have a question. So that we, when we visit this again, 365 days from today, should you be here with longer hair, um, <laughs> these requests would be then in the current, they would be in the first column, correct? Uh, correct, they would okay. be in the first column. Again. And they would be shifted over, and if they were, if it's approved in the five years, the assumption is if it's in the second year of a five year, is the assumption that it's been approved in the second year, does it have to be reapproved and resubmitted to be in the first year? Because it shifts. So again, that, that is the, I'll say in this instance, the $175 south thousand dollar question, because that gets to the difference between a capital plan, which covers five years, versus a capital budget, which covers the present fiscal year. Okay. So I will continue to make the argument that the vote of town meeting will be on the budget All right. for, this, for, the, for, for the present year. So okay. to your point, the first column of the five. Right. Um, I would also add, remember, that we still have that outstanding question of what constitutes an amendment, uh, meaning the discussion you just had. Uh, and I want to thank the superintendent because I, I want to emphasize what he just said. He worked in concert with the Department of Public Works, who deals with paving on a daily issue, and they both relied upon the county bid process because that is the best price point out there right now for municipalities. But to, to the point, we're talking about a price of $175,000 in January of 2022 
for paving that is going to commence in July of 2023. Who knows what's going to happen to the to the price point on that? So the budget item next year could be amended, perhaps. But right now, there is a discussion of the five-year plan, and this is also for the benefit of the new member, Thank you. versus the budget. There will be an article in the town meeting warrant for 2022 town meeting, May 2nd, as God is my witness, will happen on that day in that location uh, for fiscal year 23 capital items. I'm not anticipating that town meeting would be voting to adopt the plan. Just the budget? Correct, just the budget. And that's 23. But, but this committee does bear the burden, as do I, of working on a five-year plan. Okay. And just for my edification, how far do, does it vacillate the plan a year out, two years out, to the actual? Like, once it's in the plan, it can come out, it can... The dollar amount can change. That, that remains the big question. Okay. If okay. you have an opportunity, sorry, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure. Um, if you have an opportunity to look at um, the immediate previous meetings, <laughs> I've been talking about the disconnect between the current charter, uh, potential amendments to the charter going forward, and then uh, and surrounding all of that was what was the intent of the uh, bylaw charter review committee when they made these amendments originally. So there's a lot of outstanding questions that I think will only be answered by going through the process. So as the person responsible under the charter for the capital plan, I've been trying to be consistent in stating that we, you folks will help me in developing a five year plan, five rather than seven that was, was in years past. Uh, the five year part of that should be adopted by the voters this year, we hope, to, to solidify that but that the action of town meeting is on that year's town, that town meeting, so the 2022 town meeting focusing on fiscal year 23 and the corresponding uh, capital budget for that year. Okay. So we don't know if that's the way it's gonna pan out, but stay tuned. Okay. Martha, you're lost and we're lost. Okay. okay? This is unique. <laughs> I've been here over 10 years. This is the first time we're doing it this way okay okay whoever came up with this did not totally understand what we go through to figure out the approval process so we are attempting to achieve some type of success and fortunately or unfortunately joe has to deal with it and let us know what the what the answer is and dan your input is good so okay so we've talked about the 175 we did the 500. Let's look at the big stuff. And then so members, if you flip that page, you're now looking at the fiscal year 24, the $7 million that uh, the superintendent was going to speak to about water main, water main replacement on Route 28. Thanks, Joe. So this is um, for fiscal year 24. We are currently in the design phase of this project. Um, and this seeks to replace the water main from on Route 28 from Lower County Road to the Dennis Town Line. Um, a portion of this project is being coordinated with Mass DOT. Um, we're looking to hopefully save as much money as we can in partnership with them. Um, and also working with the wastewater side of things um, for that same stretch between the Dennis Town Line and the Herring River Bridge um, for that project as well. We will also, with the, I'm sure everyone's hoping just as I am, that we'll be able to benefit from some of infrastructure money. I know that Build Back Better hasn't come through yet, but hopefully there'll be something. And I just wanna note that with this project um, and others in these out years, we're gonna be looking to take opportunity of any available monies, grants, um, to come through those avenues. Okay, any questions? Did you say it was from, from Lower County up by the post office, you yep. mean? All the way to West Dennis then? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's a good stretch of section. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. If you want to tell me what you have next, the <laughs> FY25 backhoe replacement. Backhoe, okay. Um, so this is for fiscal year 25 to replace our current 1998 John Deere backhoe 310. Um, this machine primarily resides at our main office and serves as a loader for our trucks. Um, 
for water main breaks and things of that nature, um, and it's getting getting old. We would be looking to trade that backhoe in towards its replacement as well. Give me a dollar figure again. Um, I had 125 as a placeholder there. Okay. Should I continue? Yes, please. Uh, next item in the plan was for fiscal year 25 for repainting the Pleasant Lake tank. Um, again, we have a placeholder for 1.75 million. The hope here is that we can do this with an overcoat, not a full blast in repainting. Um, this tank also should be more cost effective to recoat um, in comparison to the other ones we have in town. The other tank that we have on Route 39, we refer to as a spider leg tank. Those require a lot more handwork and tooling to prep that for painting with all the turn buckles and legs. So I'm hoping that this will be on the lower end. Um. Okay, I have a question. Sure. I like to think of that as the newest tank in town. Yes. Like Almost. We just put it in. How long ago did we put it in? That one, uh, 2010, if I'm not mistaken, with that one was built. Yeah. And then the Lothrop tank was 2016. 2010, huh? Yeah. Wow. And Dan, is that the tank on Route 6 that you see Route 6? Yes. Okay. And uh, how much does the new tank cost? And would we build one like a Lothrop tank there? Or if it's even physically possible, I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah, so Lothrop, we were fortunate to be able to do a ground level pumped storage tank there um, because we had three elevated storage tanks. So just as a hypothetical, um, this past year we've been doing a lot of work at the Pleasant Lake tank. Uh, we increased the diameter of the fill pipe there and we redid all the yard piping. If we replaced the 39 tank with a ground level tank, when we did the work on Pleasant Lake tank, we would have had to buy water from a neighboring town. Mm -hmm. So the elevated water storage tanks is what provides water pressure to all the, the whole distribution system. So if we lose that elevated storage, we lose pressure. So I wouldn't recommend a ground level in Thank place you. of one of our other elevated tanks. And do you know, do we have any uh, revenue that's derived from that tank for cellular coverages at all? And yes. can we expand upon that possibly since we're gonna be have equipment there to put a better platform up there to encourage more rental or space? I'm just curious. So right now we do have um, lease agreements on both of our storage tanks. We have them with T-Mobile and with Verizon. Um, I believe they're on both of our tanks. Um, most recently Verizon was looking for an additional cell site, but they weren't in the area of our tanks. We did put out a bid for, uh, to construct a cell tower at the 196 Chatham Road property, but unfortunately, during negotiations with Verizon's legal team and Harwich's legal, we were unable to come to an agreement. Um, and that they were proposing to erect like a 130 or 40 foot tower on Chatham Road. Um, I don't know that there's a need yet, but I know they're actually out doing upgrades on those facilities now, putting up 5G and new antennas. Um, but where we do have the major carriers, I don't know if there'd be an opportunity to expand, but it's not something we can't explore. And I imagine that's something you could work with the carriers to pay the cost of expansion yeah. too. So, okay. Thank you. Well, the, the carriers are going to rent it. Yeah. They're not going to build it. They're going to rent it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not that I spent 38 years with a carrier, but uh, <laughs> you've got something that should appear in the third year for $10 million. And I don't see it on the uh, five-year plan. That was a late entry. Oh! It's on the back. Of it's on the back? Of the one that is the rolling stock, the back of it is the $10 million. Yeah, I know it's ten million, but it doesn't appear. No, you're right. Uh, that's doesn't uh, appear on this, which ah, is okay. that's a the miss by me. This is a Bible. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, if I could, um, just for future reference. Sure. Uh, the superintendent talked about ninety thousand in fiscal year twenty-three for vehicles. Yeah. Uh, there's an application. It's the next one that appears in my packet. 
So that's your heads up, Dan. Uh, fiscal year 25 vehicle replacement for two of them. So what we'll do in future years is vehicle replacement yeah. will be one form covering any and all vehicles for the five years. So we'll consolidate that going forward. Um, while the superintendent can speak to that, I'm going to update the plan to make sure I reference that uh, the $10 million uh, item for distribution system upgrades. So which should I, should I go on the $10 million? So the next one they have is the two vehicles for fiscal year. Oh, there's the $10 million. Um, 25. This, this is the first page they have. Okay. And then the second page will be well, Let's, let's. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that the 125 is unimportant vehicle replacement. I really like to understand 10 million yeah. in the third year. So if I can start with that. Sure. So what we're looking to accomplish with this, our, uh, this capital request here, and this was really, as I said, a late entry, and this was really in response to the potential for federal infrastructure money. So there's a number of projects um, that I, I believe are also included in the packet, um, if those are in there. So there's a couple of what I would argue are vulnerabilities within our water system. Um, yep. Okay, so they're double sided. Yeah, double sided. So All right. You can refer to mine. Okay. So the goal here is to identify, you know, some system vulnerabilities and try to pursue federal money should it become available. This was, I don't want to say wish list projects because they are, in my opinion, you know, of, of value and would really offer some resilience and redundancy to the water system. But these are really what we're looking to pursue should we be able to get federal infrastructure money. Okay. Um, and that's the 10 million? Yes. And th that's, that comprises of four separate, these four separate projects that were included with the packet material. So Joe, let me just ask you something because we went through this a couple of weeks ago, a couple of meetings ago. Um, you have priority lists and we're looking at whatever number one is. You know, we got to do it. And then number two is essential. And this $10 million drops to number three, which is in the middle of the pack as an enhancement. So how far down do you go, one, two, three, four, five, to put it on the big one? Um, so I guess my first answer to that would be that it, it, it goes on the draft plan. I guess your question is if it makes it in the final plan um, based on the fact that it is a uh, priority number three enhancement. I think what the superintendent was just saying is um, the reason why we would be looking to do this enhancement is if we can rely upon uh, the federal infrastructure fu infrastructure funds uh, that we're hearing about. Um, I would also tell you that at, at the most recent Board of Selectmen meeting um, uh, this past Monday, we began a conversation that is expected to carry on until at least February, and that's with the county, where the county is looking for uh, input on, um, I believe, about $41 million that the county has. Now, right now, the county holds that $41 million. They hold it, um, I'm saying the wrong words, but I'll own my words, in trust for the Cape Cod municipalities. Uh, however, there's no mechanism yet, and there's no procedure by which they're going to allocate that. Uh, if I heard correctly on Monday night, if we look at it based on population, Harwich would look, be looking around $2.3 million. Thank you. Uh, $2.3 million beyond what we already received from the state. What the county is talking about is what are those projects that the county should consider that benefit everybody. And I would argue that water distribution system upgrades, wastewater upgrades are those kind of projects that benefit everybody. It will absolutely benefit Harwich in the short term, but quality water systems throughout Cape Cod benefit everybody. And that, I think, is the thinking of the regional commissioners and the assembly of delegates. So. The reason for the long-winded answer, Mr. Chairman, is that I support the superintendent's effort to get this on the plan in the coming years because we may be able to rely upon infrastructure money. Because from my perspective, this is precisely what uh, the politicians in Washington, the president right on down, and anybody that's talking about infrastructure, when you talk about infrastructure for Cape Cod, you absolutely have to be talking about 
our water and wastewater systems. Having said that, if the superintendent were inclined to bump it up, I would not object to the prioritization being bumped up. I want to give a tip of the cap to my colleague because I think he was being as transparent as possible by calling it an enhancement. Would, would you agree? Yeah. Thanks. So, so in the old days, this would we would turn this as a placeholder. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and um, that's one of those old timey things that I'd love to continue doing. Okay. If we can understand the plan and the budget to be like that. I, I can live with it. The, the issue that I have is that it takes, it takes um, literally the capital request for, um, this is in the third year, it takes the capital request, it doubles the capital request, doubles plus the capital request right. for the entire town. So I don't have a problem with it. Um, what it's like playing 3D chess. It's like, it's like here, but it's a three. And then I have these mm -hmm. that are a two. And I, I have yet to see one, anyone that's a one. And if you don't know one, two, three, what I'm talking about is how you rate it that you want to do it. One, you got to do. Two is, yeah, I want to do it. Three is, eh. So you and don't see any four or fives. To that comment, I would I would say we probably have fifty million dollars worth of work that we could do in the street, right? But we can't afford to do it, right? You know, at this point. So I, I, I'm looking to these as you know I, I did input it as an enhancement, and that really was because I don't believe that we could fund it, you know, as a necessity, as we're currently projecting. Okay. That's Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Alan Thompson, Water Commission. Alan, you might want to go to that for the folks at home. He's been there a lot. Yes, Alan. I, I, uh, just on. Um, I, I definitely uh, want to make a point that what we're trying to do here is if the opportunity presents itself, that we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. We're looking at water mains that have been in the ground since the 30s, 40s, and even a cheap job, we got asbestos pipe in some parts of the town on major water mains that should be replaced many years ago. But when we live on our revenues, you know, we can only do so much each time. So with the opportunity for money that came from a federal level or in a programs as such, if we were ready to go, we could take advantage of it. And over the years, these things have happened, but we have never seemed to be in the right place to take advantage of those funds. So what we're trying to do here is to put ourselves in that position so we could be receive those funds and get these projects behind us. I mean, Half the reason we have water main breaks is that it's old duck, uh, old cast iron, uh, you know, it's uh, full of rust, even though we flush and do all the things, and it's weakened over time, and it just, uh, you know, uh, the headaches will keep coming more and more as time goes on. And we have a lot of that throughout the town, and, and unless you do something about it, you know, then these problems keep existing. So that's that's where we're at. No, I, I appreciate your input, Alan. You've been working with us a lot, okay, for a while. The issue that we have is that we, part of the planning process we're doing now is categorizing how important any request is. I would rather see this bump up and put on the budget rather than, I know it came in late, okay? But I'd rather bump it from it's an enhancement to it's essential because if the money there, if the money was there, it's essential, not an enhancement because you're still then degrading what the value is to us. And if it's essential, let's bump it up to essential and put it on the list and it's a placeholder. I mean. 
Yeah. If we get it, we get it. Okay? So yeah. that's that's my point of view. Yeah. Well, yeah, you guys I agree with you. Yeah. You guys know the system better than I do. We're learning it. <laughs> this is all new to us. Okay? <laughs> I, it, you know, it's different than when I did it, you know? Oh, yeah, you and Pete Watson could figure this stuff out <laughs> like that, but now we got to really think about it, you know? Yeah, well, um, we're, we're on a fix. We get guys that use computers. <laughs> this is different than us, paper and pencil. Oh. We're on a fixed income, you know? Yeah, I That's know. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. I know. Yeah. My heart bleeds for you, man. All right. Yeah, brand new Cadillac. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could, surely, um, just for the benefit of you, new member, and, and perhaps those watching uh, remotely, to your statement about priorities, I just want to remind everybody that we're working off of a form uh, that was developed by the uh, Division of Local Services. We cannot edit it. That's why you see the phrase infrastructure, not infrastructure. infrastructure. Um, we can't change that typo, which kills me. Uh, but also, we can't expand upon the pre-filled boxes. So. The priority system that the state recommends is number one priority, top priority, as the chairman said, is what's considered legally required. A priority number two status is essential. Priority three is enhancement. And the last one, priority four, is desirable. And to the chairman's statement earlier, I'm not inclined to support any desirable projects at this point. Um, so I think that was a very beneficial conversation about whether this truly is an enhancement, or if the money's available, does it become essential? Right. Yeah. And if you'd like me to in provide input on that, I mean, if, if we, if I can draw your attention to one of these, is a, a let's look at the we could do the West Harwich Resiliency Project. All of West Harwich is fed through two water mains, one on Route 28 and one on Lower County Road. If say we had a you know nor'easter storm that flooded up Herring River, pushed boats up Herring River, those water mains are hanging right underneath those bridge decks. In that event, entirety of West Harwich would lose water. So the West Harwich Resiliency Project would backfeed that from Great Western, giving us more redundancy in that area. Um, another one is similar. Um, we have another area like that, um, the Headwaters neighborhood. There's over 400 houses in there that's fed with one water main. Um, that's another project that I discussed with the commission that we may consider when we discuss the well 10 treatment plant, maybe including a directional drill to the backside of headwaters so that that could provide a back feed to that neighborhood. Um, we have some asbestos water main on Route 28 from the Chatham line, almost right up to uh, Chatham Road which we're looking to replace with 8-inch to 10-inch ductile iron. Um, another area that we identified right in Harwich Center here, coming from 39, we go from a 12-inch water main to a 10-inch to an 8-inch to a 10-inch to an 8-inch back to a 12-inch when you get to Old Main Street on the other, on the other side of town here, which is, causes a lot of discon uh, pressure issues. So when we do water main flushing, we've triggered the fire alarm at the... Um, the senior citizens, assisted living, I think, over, there's a senior Rosemary. citizen? Rosemary. Rosemary, thank you. Um, we've tripped their fire alarm, and that's due to that discontinuity in that area. Okay. Um, so these are the projects. Yeah, let me, let me, so we can speed this up a bit. Um, let's, we have one more number request. What we do normally is bring a, every department in to our own meeting rather than sort of this hybrid we have today where we're looking at the numbers that are going for town meeting and the requests. We normally, as we've done in the past, bring in and you prioritize the projects that you're doing, you tell Capital Outfit Committee what's it all about. And that, that's probably on, on these uh, maps and so forth we're talking about. So let's, let's stay because we could be here like till five o'clock and uh, I don't wanna do that. I like you, but <laughs> <laughs> so you have one more, and that's the um, removal or replace portions of the distribution system. Yes, and that was another item from our 30-year master plan. Okay, similar to to the ones I just discussed. And that's in the fourth year, FY 26. 
six, yeah. A million and a half. So, I think we did skip over the FY25 vehicle replacement. I know you wanted to get to the 10 if you want to. No, that's, that's okay. Um, Keep moving. Type discon, can you pronounce that? Discontinuity. Word? Discontinuity, okay. So that was what I was just discussing about Harwich Center here, I the gotcha. 12 to 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're basically going to keep those numbers there and we're going to add, Joe, the 10 million. Right. Are that. Done. You got that all? Yep. Okay, yeah. guys? Yeah. Okay. Dan? Wastewater? Well, yeah, that's... <laughs> Even bigger numbers. <laughs> Even bigger numbers. And again, if I could, just for everyone's benefit, you should have in your packets, uh, members, uh, two pages that cover three requests. The front page that I show starts with a request date of December 13th, 2021 for a fiscal year 24 East Harwich Collection System Expansion, parentheses phase three. Um, you can see the priority is legally required. Uh, date needed is 7-1-2023, so that's fiscal year 24 for $30 million. The reverse side of that is FY24 Route 28 sewer main installation. And then the third application is fiscal year 25 phase four collection system design. So that's the order in which they have them if you want to go that way. Great. So I'll just preface the wastewater discussion with that we're just embarking on CWMP revisions. Um, so that is likely to impact outgoing wastewater capital items. That said, I have some confidence with the timeline here. Um, hopefully next Tuesday before the board will be the design contract to begin the design for this article, um, the design of the collection system for phase three. So once that's underway, this would be ultimately the construction to do the Round Cove and Heron River watersheds in East Harwich. So that would keep us in line to meet our permit requirements under the watershed permit with the Pleasant Bay Alliance. Um, I did break this into, it is a $30 million request and I did propose it to be funded in two fiscal years, um, really because having two massive infrastructure projects going on simultaneously in East Harwich um, was a nightmare for people to get around. So we're looking to do that um, a little better next time. Um, for fiscal year 24 is the Route 28 sewer main installation. Um, design, I believe, is already underway for this, and this coincides with the 2024 Mass DOT resurfacing from the Dennis Town Line to the Herring River Bridge. And then lastly is fiscal year 25 phase four collection system design at a $2.5 million um, figure there, building on what we've spent on the past two sewer construction design um, projects. I will also just state that without a place to treat wastewater outside of East Harwich, we won't have anywhere for this collection system to go to. As part of CWMP revisions, you know, we hope to talk to Dennis about potential partnership opportunities, but if those don't <coughs> come to fruition, you know, if the town has to build its own plant, or whatever that looks like in the future will likely impact this third request for FY25. I have a question for you. On the 30 million request, and it has to do, have, has the map changed in terms of implementing sewerage in East Harwich? The, I get I, the, are I, you referring to the CDM map that was color coded that had the phases? Yeah, it tells you what date you're going to be, what yeah. phase you're going to be. Has so that changed? The limits of the sewered area may change, yes. Um, and I say that because attenuation rates have changed in East Harwich, and I'd also like to explore discussions with the Waquasset. We may be able to pick them up as a bigger customer, removing nitrogen from Round Cove, relying less on single family homes in the watershed. So there are some things that I'd like to do through the CWMP revision process and planning to refine that area. I wouldn't say that it's gonna change dramatically, but I wouldn't say I wanna die on that sword, if you will, of those limits. Well, 
The question that I have that people are approaching me about is the fact, are contractors still required to get them ready to connect to a sewer system? And I think the question is going to come up at town meeting, whether it's formal during the meeting mm -hmm. or let me pull you aside in the corner and say, Joe, what's, what's the scoop? Yeah. And I think we have gone through enough. I'm East Harwich myself. I'm not affected till I'll be dead. But the people that are affected have spent money already is the assumption that what they've done works with this or whatever the plan is modified to look like. Have they spent money when they didn't have to? Do they still have to spend money? And I think we, someone, there used to be committee, and some, somebody would head the committee, and they would have the neighborhoods come in and discuss it at the community center or whatever. Are we prepared to do that again, or are we not ready to answer these questions even though the, the questions were presented two years ago, three years ago, and we spent time two years ago, three years ago, you know, saying to them, yeah, this neighborhood needs it, you need it, we've got five contractors that can do it. Does all that still apply to the situation we're in now with modifications? So just point of clarification for myself, when you talk about um, people who have spent money so far, are you referring to people on streets that were removed from phase two due to the bid overrun? No. Or, okay, so you're referring to the 440 houses that have been sewered by phase two so far? I don't know. To answer the question, I, I don't know so, because I think people don't understand the magnitude <clears throat> of what we're trying to do and what has happened during the process that possibly have changed right. the rules of the game. Right, so and that's, that's, I guess, the adaptive management component, right? So the attenuation rates of the natural estuaries and embayments in East Harwich have changed. They've changed since we started the CWMP. They've changed in Upper Muddy Creek in a favorable way for the town of Harwich in that the sewering that we did was more effective than when we put the plan together, right? So we're taking in all the new information, new attenuation rates, and what we need to do, so the watershed permit has a specific amount of nitrogen that we need to remove to meet the appropriate concentrations in the harbor. So we have to back into how many homes we need to sewer based on that number. And the number of homes is this times the attenuation rate, which will give us our area. Once we do that work, once we have the conversations with Wacosset, we would be ready and be able to discuss which parcels are gonna be sewered and which ones aren't, so that people could prepare and take action. With that. And I guess that's a very technical, very professional answer, but the average homeowner back two years ago got a letter in the mail with a map and if your street or your house was highlighted on the map you had to do something and i'm not going to send that map until i am 100 percent on the limits of and the i guess area. the question is the those that were impacted by the original map yeah. and that acted upon it yes are they still those homes still viable and need changes or they shouldn't have done it anyway. So those homes, so Continental and Witta, for example, were two roads in East Harwich that were removed due to the bid overrun, as well as the Sugar Hill Drive neighborhood, Huckleberry Path, and a few others. Um, we were able to authorize a change order under contract one to complete Continental and Witta. So I think that's the sort of situation you're speaking to where those neighborhoods were sent a letter, they prepared, they contracted with Coastal Engineering for the association, they prepared their sewer stub locations, and then the town pulled those streets from the project. Had we not been able to award this change order, they would have done that for nothing, right? I think that's the, what you're trying to get well, I'm to. looking at 137, Partridge yep. coming up, and those streets 
you know, partial, like a partridge went down 200 feet and then it stopped and the rest were fine, but these that. Yeah, and I guess, so when we talk about what are we gonna sewer it, what I base my recommendation in judgment on is that the town is not sewering for economic growth. We're sewering to mitigate nitrogen as required, you know, in our embayments and estuaries. If we were doing it for growth, it would be a lot easier. Um, so when we talk about what streets do, are we going to do this street? Unless the nitrogen requires it, I wouldn't recommend we do it. Okay. Now, Continental and Witta are in an area that we have met our nitrogen removal requirements within the permit. That said, that neighborhood approached me and the Board of Selectmen expressing, you know, that there was unhappiness that the town sent that letter, pulled the streets, there was no notification, and they were able to issue the change order. If we were going to do that for the other streets, I would look to the, the selectmen or someone above my pay grade to make the determination that we're no longer just doing this for nitrogen purposes, we're going to do it for other reasons as well. And Mr. Chairman, that's the segue I'm going to jump on to say, when we talk about what happened two years ago, uh, especially the letter that was sent by the town to uh, property owners in that area, I want to make it abundantly clear. That letter contained the name and title of our water, wastewater superintendent and our health director at the time, who was now my assistant town administrator. Uh, and neither of those names should have appeared on that letter. Rather, my predecessor's name should have appeared in that letter. And I will not have that happen again going forward. If a letter goes out, you will better believe it'll be signed by either the Board of Selectmen and or me, rather than foisting it upon staff, especially where those staff members were arguing against that action. And, and um, I can't let this moment pass without putting that on the record. Uh, what Dan and Megan were offering the town was not accepted. Uh, I'm not gonna make that mistake going forward. The way I would wrap this whole thing up or try to wrap it all up is, this is a, uh, a good faith effort by administration through the Board of Selectmen to partner with our wastewater uh, superintendent as well as the Water Wastewater Commission uh, and to do things better than we have in the past. And so that's why um, Dan's presentation today and what he's recommending uh, are meant to uh, announce to the community that we're still working on wastewater. There's still a lot of work to be done, but we are working uh, ever diligently to not make the mistakes that were made two years ago by folks that are no longer part of our government. Okay, I, 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 just a recommendation, because uh, we were involved, this committee has been involved in this stuff. I, I think it's, I understand COVID has put a lot of dampers on, on things that we normally have done. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think anybody's, anybody's gonna turn on the TV to watch somebody tell them something. Um, I think as things maybe improve health-wise and the environment, I'm recommending, and I think this committee should recommend, is that we're looking at numbers like that that affect so many people. We need to present some updates to the community by having in-person kind of, so. you know, either here, but <coughs> an environment where somebody's not talking to you, but it's back and forth up first um, the timing of your your point couldn't be better however we're not at liberty right now to uh, update you on uh, what we're planning because that's going rightfully before the board of selectmen first next week uh, but Dan and I with our finance director our assistant town administrator uh, and other staff members have been working with GHD our engineering firm who was hired as a result of town meeting vote in the fall to engage in those very same discussions that we used to do in the past. Um, we, we met as recently as last week and earlier this week, and those plans are being impacted right now by the surge, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to time it so that when it is safer to come back, that we can do these in a public forum, face-to-face, eye-to-eye, and hopefully without masks or anything like that. So, we have been working very diligently at that. The most recent surge just kills the planning right now. Yeah, I, I um, just. But well, we're not giving up, and we are. We will be announcing later this month efforts to do exactly that. 
My fear is that we have a lot of senior citizens in this mm -hmm. town, Absolutely. and the last thing they need to do is come up with two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars, whatever, whatever that number is, and, and not putting it into the house, I but agree. putting it into pipes underground. And what I would, say, what I would just say, and I've said, you know, in public forums before, and when we were getting into phase two, um, and those letters were going out, I am available to residents. They don't need to hire an engineering firm to help site where their sewer service should come onto their frontage. I'm perfectly qualified and capable to help people out, and they don't need to spend money um, in advance. Well, anyway, if anybody's so. watching this, Dan, you're the man. So, amen. Okay. I have a quick question. Sure. Are we sending any sewerage to Chatham yet? Not yet. We had a meeting last Friday with uh, myself representatives from Chatham and representatives from Weston and Sampson to work on the final language for the operations agreement. I saw an email this morning from Chatham to Weston and Sampson saying they were happy with the language, so I'm cautiously optimistic we'll be mailing letters within the next week or so. So we're almost at that point now? We're very, very close. Okay. We had DEP out this morning actually who uh, witnessed the pump station start, the last pump station startup, and they we're going to be getting a letter to start contract two as well in the near future. Okay. So. Okay. Dan, thank you. Any, we're good. We got to wake up, John. Yeah. John. Thank you. you. You're good. You're good. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As the <coughs> harbor master approaches, your schedule originally had recreation. Yeah. Um, I do want to take this opportunity to alert the general public through you folks. Uh, the plan that you have in front of you rec reflects that recreation. Uh, and the commission that supports it do not anticipate any capital plan projects okay. for fiscal years 23 through 27. As you know, they rely predominantly on community preservation projects, and so they do not have a need to come before you folks, and that's why we're able to go next to the Harbor Master. Uh, and then for the benefit of the new member and anybody else, remember that the capital uh, booklet that will include the budget as well as the plan will also identify other projects funded elsewhere, such as community preservation. Okay. So that will still be presented to the public. Why don't you take a peek at how they have it so that he can see, because we've been double-siding forms, so just so you know the, the order in which they have it. Mr. Chairman, I think what you folks have is first uh, the last form that John provided to me. I'm sure most of you didn't get it when I forwarded to you. That's why you have hard copies. But it is uh, related to vehicle replacement. So that's the fiscal year 2026. Is that on the top? Sure. Yep. Yes. It's on the top of your plans there. Um, I think we can speak to that very quickly. First, I want to say that, yes, $42,000 does not equal $50,000, which constitutes uh, a uh, capital outlay individually. However, if you scroll down and you can see as I've been tracking, sorry, scroll down is what you do on a computer, not on a paper. Um, as you look at the, uh, the latter half of the document there, you can see that I've been tracking vehicle purchase and replacement. The Harbor Master's request, which is an appropriate request for that time frame, it would be $42,000 part and parcel of an overall 537000 that the town would be looking for vehicle purchase and or replacement. So for my purposes, I would argue that it does rise to the level. Uh, it's just going to be how I present it. Okay. Where's the 537? Say again. So if, the, if you look at the form, yeah. uh, the, the, the draft form, uh, sorry, I'm saying it wrong, the, this document. Right. If you look uh, at the bottom, right above the funding summary box, you can see where it says vehicle purchase and replacement. As I've said to the committee before, I've been tracking that separately. The, All the way request down the of the Harbor Master. Uh, for the vehicle. Oh, I see, I see. comes I see, under see. fiscal year 26. I see. So you can see that's part of 537,000. Good. Oh, okay. Be good if I take those. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. So that's for the entire town. Town, right. Correct. That line. And so what I'm getting to on that, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is that um, it, it is that struggle that I have to create capital without the benefit of a uh, very well defined um, structure or definition yet, but we'll correct that through the proper okay. means. But Vehicle replacement in a, in a budget year, there is no year when it drops below 50000 And so I would be inclined to take vehicle 
purchase or replacement as its own capital project is what I'm trying to say. Okay. I think it's helpful for people to see it as it relates to the appropriate departments, but it would be part of the overall purchase. So you're looking at as a view of the town as a macro view. Correct. Rather than a Correct. micro view yeah. of the and, and I think that works for two reasons. First of all, any and all vehicles that we have, uh, more often than not are serviced by our public works department. Right. But also any and all vehicles and property that are surplus, right. we combine them and sell them as such as well. Okay. You were meant to be going early, but here we are. You're done, thank you. <laughs> Was that it, the, the, the truck? That, it can be. Well, there's you more. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, John Rendell and Harbor Master. Uh, if I can, just real quick, uh, before we get into the projects, um, I know we're running late, but it won't take long, just a, a refresher kind of of what our department is about. You know, we, uh, our primary mission is uh, providing maritime public safety, first and foremost. In addition, we um, enforce all the waterways and boat operation uh, state and local bylaw regulations. Uh, we have over 600 moorings that we manage throughout our various waterways. We maintain um, all our aids to navigations. You know, we set more. We set our aids on various waterways, all except for Sacquatucket, which is a federal channel. We operate the town pump-out facilities. Uh, we manage the marina, 210 slip marina, uh, that takes a, a bulk of our effort. Um, we administer the slip mooring offloading permitting processes. Uh, we're responsible for dredging our harbors, uh, permitting and scheduling, coordinating. Uh, the dredging of our harbors. And we have an expensive, expansive waterway. So we have our three major harbors, as you know, Sacquatucket, Witchmere, and Allen Harbor. In addition, we have all of the Herring River where we have two landings and a number of moorings. And then on the north side, we're, we've got a mooring field and in, in, in a uh, public landing and boat ramp at Round Cove. We have about 80 moorings in Pleasant Bay and we are in charge of response uh, in our section of Pleasant Bay. And we have Long Pond, which is, gets real busy in the morning. So we're, I mean, in these summer months. So we're uh, pretty well spread out. And we do that with four full-time staff and three seasonal positions. Um, that expansive waterway has a lot of infrastructure. And so as you know, I've been here in front of you for many years uh, uh, dealing with some of the infrastructure upgrades that we've done over the past 10 years since I've been here. And so most of what you see on our cap my capital plan, uh, the five-year outlook, um, ag again, deals with infrastructure. And so for if, if I can go per year, if that works, I don't know what order you are, but you know, FY uh, 23, I've got no scheduled uh, projects for that year. The, the next year, FY 24, um, you'll see I'm requesting $2 million for the replacement of the Allen Harbor uh, West Jetty. A um, couple of years ago, we got approved $57,000, $58,000 to do the study on what it would take and what the recommendations were from a professional engineer to improve that jetty. We dredge Allen Harbor every year. And you look, come spring, April time, you take a look at the harbor and you'll see a huge shoal that essentially uh, chokes off Allen Harbor. So we have to dredge every year. It takes uh, about $80,000 to dredge Allen Harbor. And so, you know, the thought process was let's look at what we can do to improve the jetty. And by improving the jetty, I think we reduce the frequency in which we have to dredge Allen Harbor. Do we totally rid the need to dredge? No. Just like all our other channels, we'll have to dredge. But certainly, I think any effort we do would help to um, decrease the frequency in which we dredge. So as I state in, in the um, sheet that I, I gave you, we have a, a draft report from our engineers that have uh, three different types of recommendations for replacement of the jetty. My $2 million estimate I think is pretty accurate based upon uh, what their estimations are uh, dependent on um, what recommendation we take to improve the jetty. They split the jetty up into two zones and they have different recommendations per zone. Zone B is the outer 
jetty that's out in Nantucket Sound, and then as you get into the, the channel, um, that's zone A, and they have different recommendations. So does it need to be done? Yeah, it does, and I think we could, we could depending on uh, moving forward, the engineer, uh, I'm trying to get scheduled to present to the board their report and their recommendations and put it in front of the board of, board of selectmen and see what they think, how we should move forward. Um, you notice in the form, I say enhancement as a priority vice essential. And um, it's a tough one from my perspective because we have a clear benefit of dredging every year, Allen Harbor, because we have, as you know, a number of public beaches that need to be nursed. And by dredging every year, we are able to keep our public beaches well nourished uh, because we know we're gonna have 10,000, 12,000 cubic yards of material to put on our public beaches and our dredge uh, plan, the town's dredge plan, directs me to first and foremost nourish our public beaches and then if we have any surplus, any additional, then we can go out and look at selling to private homeowners, which we just did this past summer. And it's an opportunity for us to recoup some revenue uh, that um, can put towards offsetting dredge costs. So I say that because it's, I'm in a little bit of a pickle. You know, I, can, can we and should we upgrade our, our jetty? I don't think it's in such condition, at least the, the engineer's report didn't indicate that it was so bad it's going to fail completely. But if we spend some money and we upgrade the jetty, we certainly will be able to reduce the frequency in which we dredge. But there's a downside to that. So that's where I'm at. And I'd like to take any questions you may have regarding to that project. I have a couple questions. <clears throat> Does the engineer's report say anything about extending the jetty? It does not, and it doesn't recommend that we extend the jetty. Because I'm fully against that. Correct. There is no thought whatsoever that, that in general, the, the scope of what their repairs are, the inside zone, zone A, right now it's got a supporting um, timber bulkhead. They're recommending that we change that timber bulkhead, are, are either upgrading and, and putting an, another timber bulkhead in place, which I don't recommend, or putting a bulkhead that has it's FRP, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, almost like a plastic fiberglass type bulkhead that they drive in, um, in addition to some of the stone there that 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 I think is the best long term, and they are recommending as the primary source. And then on the outside, they're recommending either taking what's failed and re repacking it, redoing it, putting more armor stone on there. Um, and potentially raising it a foot, but there is no thought of extending that jetty. That's good. Is there any chance that the people that would benefit by Zone A, the people that live in that neighborhood, any chance that they could take part in this? Uh, well, that's a great question because it, the, one of the delays we've had is trying to determine ownership. Where does that private property start? when it comes to, because we're not going all the way down. If you look at, if you look at the jetty, you're gonna see kind of three things. You're gonna see the outer, you know, the, the jetty that extends out into, into Nantucket Sound. And then you have this pretty sturdy, good formed jetty that's got some uh, timber bulkhead that supports it that, that clearly is in disrepair and needs to be replaced. And then the further the you go down, it's all just wooden bulkhead that's all, that is the private property, and our intent is not to go that far. Okay. We're going to the point that we have determined as public property, and, and, and that's it. So to answer your question, I'm not going to, I, I think we're gonna get input from the private homeowner that would like to see some improvement to that bulkhead that abuts their property. Yeah, because they, they should pay. Pop. Well, I mean, I, I'm looking at doing the public piece of it. The, the one of the recommendations is to pull sand from the backside of that jetty. That big dune. Right? And there's gonna be 
th there's going to be some issues there because that That's beach true. can be considered, that accreted sand can be considered part of the private property, yep. as you know. So those are going to be some hurdles to overcome. Well, that dune that's on the west side, every time the wind blows from the southwest, it blows the sand off the top of that dune right into the channel. Yes, sir, it does. So that's part of the problem. It's going over, it's going through, and I think it's going under. John, the, um, the request is for $2 million. Yes, sir. And you're, the town is currently spending 80 a year, approximately, to dredge. Right. If you spent the two million, how does that eighty does that eighty still exist? You spent I mean if we go back to thirteen, call it ten years for the sake of argument. We spent if that eighty is true it hasn't gone up, we're talking about eight hundred thousand, almost a million dollars of dredging that we've dumped in literally. And we spent that money and we still have to spend it every year. It's recurring. Does that recurring amount decrease or go away if you spent the two million? Yeah, I mean, I think it clearly decreases. I don't think we're going to have to dredge every year once okay. this is done. I think we'll probably have to dredge every three or four years, similar okay. to what okay. we do Sacquatucket, right? Okay. Um, but how do you put a price tag on um, well, the value of what that sand does for us to keep our beaches nourished? and? That, that's a question that needs to be considered, I think. That, yeah, that's an important question because last summer season, when you sold all the sand to the people in that neighborhood who paid for it, yep. and none of the sand got put on the public beaches. That's not true, but go ahead. Well, it's all down there now, Wendy, because it all moves. We put a lot of sand, in addition to the privates, we put a lot of sand on our public beaches because I had a huge volume of sand because I did both Allen Harbor and Sacquatucket Harbor. The neighbors in the Windermere Bluffs area were concerned that they didn't get any sand. Windermere Bluffs got a ton of sand. Okay. Uh, concerning the sand, though, too, you say it costs $80,000 to uh, for the town, but then we get reimbursed by the, t by the private people buying the sand, though, right? Not every year. Not every when year. I when I can sell sand, when I have surplus sand, then like for example, this past summer, we sold to don't quote me six or seven property owners. Right. We generated about one hundred thirty thousand dollars. Right. And so clearly that offsets our okay. dredge costs. Right. Okay. Does it pay for it outright? No, but it certainly helps. But you've never had an issue selling sand, though, either, right? I we mean, have not. The, the demand out, outpaces your, uh, what, what you actually dredge up there. That's and, correct. Uh, and uh, like you say, it is a difficult decision, John. And uh, uh, I'd like to hear from the engineers on what they think, you know, because I'm sure there's no guarantees. We spend $2 million, they're not going to guarantee for 10 years we don't have to dredge Allen Harbor. Yeah, you'll never you know? hear that. I mean, yeah. that's just. So I, I think that the town makes enough money. Uh, by dredging it, and the biggest thing is that the beaches get nourished. You know, I don't know what the number one draw in Harwich is, but I would bet the beaches are pretty close to number one draw as far as people coming in spending dollars at the beaches. And to replenish those beaches every year is, I think, is almost an annual thing that we shouldn't do. So, uh, well, uh, fortunately, it's not in this year's budget. It's, no. it's in the plan. I don't think anybody disagrees that he could be in the second year, we'd agree. That, again, we'd look at it because it, if it stays where it is, it's going to drop back to the first year next year. Correct. It comes yeah. the current Correct. year. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, the only piece to that, if I can, Mr. Chairman, is we're going to have to make a decision sooner than, sooner than later. Yeah. So I'm hopeful that the town, that the GEI Consulting will, within a month's time, be in front of the board to brief their findings. Well, if that is in fact, I mean, it, does it still remain in, in 24? It does, because then we, st we have time, we need time to do all the permitting for it. Well, that's your administrative stuff. I, I'm concerned about, no, does I, it appear in the right year? I agree. Should we agree that it should be done? I agree with the timing that the, the Harbor Master has outlined. Right. Um, for not only the permitting, there's also gonna be the procurement issues. 
Um, but I also want to use as an opportunity to draw you back to his form because John has given quite a bit of useful information in this form whereby he's telling us that it's not just the project. The project includes the engineering administration and that's important to note because in years past we might have said 50,000 for engineering and then two, on, uh, two million for the project. John has done what I've asked the department heads to do is consider all of the ancillary costs that relate to that. In the two so million. that's captured in his request. In his two million. Correct, what's also captured in there, if you look under the section that talks about are there available revenue sources other than municipal funds. Now, these are funds that the municipality has, but I think what John's recording here is these are special funds that he has available uh, that may come to bear. Is that what you're talking about? I, I, I have Carol behind me, so she's probably saying, well, there's not much money left in those accounts because <laughs> these are funds that we have where they're waterways funds that we are able to uh, utilize for these types of projects. But these funds currently have just been used to pay off Witchmere Harbor, the debt that we had there. And now they're being utilized to pay some of the debt on some of these other uh, Sacquatucket projects. But know. the question is if there's funds in but there But there's at funds the time. there right. that we are waterways receipts reserve funds that could we have good. available. Could be. Okay. Did I answer that right? Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> well, Potentially. You, you did in my sense that, again, <laughs> for the purposes of transparency, we're putting out there that if we can use these funds in this way, we're not just looking for a $2 million handout, figure out where the money comes from. It's meant to be a collaborative uh, effort by a, a harbor master to show that we're looking at any and all potential funds that could impact upon this, or any and all sources that could impact upon the funding. Just a quick question. That bar is uh, really growing pretty good in Allen's Harbor Channel right now. You're probably going to have to dredge this year. This time, it, yes, sir. I mean, every year it's that way. I mean, it, it's really getting big every, now. Ev every year it is. So my point is, if we don't dredge Allen Harbor, if for, for some reason we can't dredge for the year, by the middle to the end of that summer, that channel will be choked off. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, we have to. We have to dredge it. Um, fortunately, we have the county dredge in our you know, we, we don't have, I mean, w it's reasonable to dredge because we have the county, um, but it's, it's a cost. Do you still consider an enhancement or, or essential? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, did you hear the discussion earlier with the uh, wastewater superintendent, uh, whereby he called it an enhancement and was pursuing it because there may be funds available but if the funds are available, he considered it essential. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's not just me playing with words, but um, I think you know, the conversation that was helpful today, what it gets to is where does this rank? If we don't do it, uh, what does that do? You know, and, and again, if I could, Mr. Chairman, enhancement is not desirable. Um, so I don't want uh, number three to, to necessarily be considered to be uh, a stray mark that, that doesn't meet the, uh, the, the level, but as you think of it, is there, is, what is the, the line between essential and enhancement? I mean, I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I'll just be honest, I struggled with it because if I don't have the ability to nourish our beaches, that is going to be a problem. Yeah. That big, is going to be a right. major problem. Big problem. Again, this is a placeholder. It could change next year. My, my concern now is that we put the asterisk, double it, to ensure that we fully understand that if, if we had the money, it would become essential. If we had the money, and, 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 and <laughs> then we should do it. I yeah, mean, that answers my question. I guess question. that's the. I we're guess not committing. I mean, we're not. We're not married to it. All I'm saying is, I think we give it a higher value because of the negatives. That's going to happen if we don't do it. And if it's an enhancement, somebody's got. At least my interpretation of enhancement means something exists 
and it works. We're going to make it work better. That's enhancing whatever this thing is. If I'm saying that it's essential that we do something, we're, we're making it better, and it's, it's only going to get worse. That's my interpretation. Well, no, I, I, I don't disagree with where you're going. What I, what, the rain that I wanted to pour on this parade is that um, if, if all of the requests, sorry, even if we change some requests from enhancement to essential or essential to enhancement, it doesn't change the fact that when I go back to my drawing board and I ask the finance director how much money do we think we have available, it's still going to require me to come back and potentially say, as essential as this is, we cannot afford it. Hmm. Uh, and that's where we finalize the plan by moving projects perhaps out to future years in the hope that we have it. Having said that, I think I understand where you were coming from earlier, Mr. Chairman, because at present, we're looking at a capital budget uh, for fiscal year 23 right now that is uh, just under $4 million. We're looking at a draft bu uh, uh, budget for fiscal year 24 that's just over $44 million. So I understand the concept. But however they're prioritized, it still falls to me to recommend to you folks and then to the selectmen and the um, finance committee of what the plan and budget should be. I think you and the finance director have, have the charge to look at the town as a whole and say what's essential and what's an enhancement. I think the department heads have a little more vested in it in their own department to say, to me, this project is essential. On the grand scape of things, it could his essential could be an enhancement to the town. Yes. You could downgrade it, you can upgrade it. But for his department, I think he should be able to rate what he feels in his numbers. I agree, and I want I I warned department and I heads have. that I um, okay. would be using these opportunities uh, to potentially say positive and nice things about department heads. And one of the nicest things and the best things I can say about John is what he just said to you earlier. He struggled with this, and, and I appreciate, and, and I know all the department heads have, but it is a relief, probably not the best way to say it, but it, it's a comfort for me to hear that. I knew that, but what, what we're now saying on the public record is our harbor master is struggling with these requests because he is aware of the overall situation the town's in. Okay. He wants to be collaborative, and um, misery loves company, so that's the last part I'll thank him for. <laughs> well, let me, let me put something on I me. Mean, I've been here a long time, and when John presents something, it's credible, and he does the analysis. Whether it's good or bad, we hear it. So I'm just taking <clears throat> what John says is the truth. But I'm happy with it. Appreciate that. Do you have my home address to send the check? <laughs> <laughs> but John. thank you, John. Go ahead. Could you let me know, or if I, I, I try to track the selectman's agenda pretty closely, but if, if you get on the engineering company in here, the, the selectman, I'd like to be, sure. make sure I'm there, because I want to hear from them. I mean, they're the experts on yep. this. And uh, if they could say, no, it's going to be still dredging over, I mean, sanding over every other year, then it, the $2 million isn't worth it, in my opinion. Because you know, we need the sand. That's the bottom line, too. So. Thank we you. need clean beaches and healthy beaches. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that's the revenue stream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You can't stop the sand from moving from west to east. No. That's, and the southwest wind is the predominant wind. It's got to move west to east. So why are we doing the breakwater? I remember <laughs> when there was no breakwater there. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Okay. I mean, I could talk. But I'll leave it no I've got dinner it. reservations. Let's go. And it's four o'clock. I'm old, you know. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to FY uh, 25. If I can, I have one project there listed. Um, it's 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 money for engineering and permitting to redo the Herring River boat ramp. Um, Route 28. Uh, it's one of our smallest landing, smallest boat ramps that we have. It's in horrible shape it's uh we 
as I noted here, got some real good help from DPW facilities. Um, uh, Sean Libby and his group went in there um, almost I don't know, nine months ago or so, and uh, they, they did a, a real nice job putting a temp repair on that, and I think that's going to last for several years. But uh, again, it's, um, it's not sloped properly, so you know it's almost like a horizontal pad that they put, so we still get boats getting hung up at low tides with their trailers trying to come out. Um, the top part of the ramp is just crumbling. It, it, it's, it needs to be replaced. And it's not a huge job, but it's very similar to what we did at Round Cove, even a smaller in, in scope, though. Um, Joe, excuse me. This 30 is part of the 300. It's actually a 330. Uh, correct. Again, it, okay. uh, the total project would be the line going across. Right. But again, we want to just break that out so people can see uh, the totality of it throughout the years. So I, I may have done this wrong, Joe. If What I was intending here is I'm estimating that it's going to be about a $300 project to, 300, re to redo it. So when I, at least what I've been trying to do, usually engineering and permitting, you figure 10% of the total project Correct. cost. Yeah, that's fine. So that's kind of what I did. So I, I separated the two because I like to have a year to do the design and permitting right. and then the following year do the construction. Yeah. So I separated no, the you, two. That's you exactly did it right. What we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The problem, so the, problem we're, we're, yep. Okay. the problem we're avoiding is if you just had the 30 there, it doesn't meet the requirement of 50. But if we take the 30 and put it on top okay. of the three, now, you're, now we're in. Okay. Okay. And that's the dance we've been dancing. Got it. Got it. I, what I heard was the 300 includes the, the 30,000. So really the pro construction cost would be 270. And no, no, no. So, no, no. Okay. no. Okay. We're at the high end, Got 330. It. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it is a very popular ramp, too. It, it is. Yeah. It is. I mean, not, not big boats launch no. there, but a lot of smaller boats and do. Kayaks. And kayaks. A lot of kayaks. Yeah, a lot of kayaks. I've had yeah. a lot of those. Yeah. So moving on to uh, FY26. Uh, we've already talked about the vehicle. Mm -hmm. We put that in there, so I, I don't think that needs any more discussion. Sacratucket bulkhead replacement. So um, this was for the engineering and permitting of that, and... And then in FY28, uh, it's not there because it's a five-year plan, but next year you will see FY28 would be the construction of that bulkhead. So just to give a little history, you know, we redid the marina, redid all our docks, dredged the entire harbor. Um, during that project, we had the engineers evaluate the condition of the bulkhead. It, it needs work. If you've seen it, uh, Concrete cap is cracked in several locations. We did do some repairs to the steel gussets that support the bulkhead um, as part of that project, which I think helps. The estimate from the engineers at the time evaluated the useful life of the bulkhead for another seven to 10 years. So I've put it on a, you know, it come year 10, we need to redo those bulkheads. Okay. And the way we designed the docks was such that we can come in Without having to tear apart our dock system, we can drive those sheets right in front of the existing bulkhead with minimal disruption to our project. Okay, I have a question, and it's, uh, I don't know if it's Joe or you, but Weechmere, out, Weechmere Outer Harbor Dredge? Yes. Are there any numbers to go in there? No, actually that was uh, removed from the earlier version. It will be removed going forward. Uh, the harbor master and I confirmed this morning that okay, so there's nothing. there'll be nothing with that. Okay. Uh, I think that was related to uh, placeholder and future years. Okay. And there is none. There's not in the five-year plan. Uh, I've taken it off the plan for a okay, number of reasons. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Are we good? Uh, and then uh, the last one in FY27 would be the construction work of the ramp that we've already talked about. So right. We're That's good. the ramp versus the, the 30,000. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you John. Okay. Any thank questions? You. Are we good? Good? Good. Good. Thank you. So um, as our library director comes forward, I have to publicly apologize. I suggested to both Ginny and Jamie that with the absence of other departments, they could probably go quicker. 
What I ended up doing was just jinxing them and making it later. So <laughs> you ladies want to move okay. up too? That's my public apology. That's no Sorry problem. about that. I should have kept my mouth shut. Not a problem. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman and members, we have our library director here. We are uh, joined by some of the uh, library trustees. Yep. We have. Uh, so we have Jen. Hello, folks. Can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, could you hear that? Or do you want them at the microphone? Or yeah. we're good. Thank no, you. I want them to participate. And so what you will see then from our library director, there is uh, a single application uh, for this five-year plan, and it relates specifically to the library itself with modifications. Uh, there are two components to it. And with that, I'm going to close my mouth and turn it over to our library director. All right. Good afternoon. I'm happy to not say good evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, in February, it will be 24 years since the last major renovation of the library. So the purpose of this project is to reconfigure the interior floor space in order to better accommodate library operations and services. It, this project doesn't seek to add to the footprint in any way. Um, the library's role in the community and the services that we provide have changed significantly since the last renovation, um, which was completed in oh, 1998, um, and use of the library has doubled. Many of the services and resources that we provide weren't even contemplated um, when the project was being planned in the mid-90s. They require floor space, wiring and cabling for technology, um, furnishing, shelf space, et cetera. So we've adapted as best we can, but it's been clear for some time that changes are needed. Um, this project's been on the capital plan for several years, and it was pushed back due to the pandemic. As, that turns out, as it turns out, that was a good thing, and, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, for this upcoming capital plan, we've requested uh, 40,000 in fiscal year 25 for the development of plans and 150,000 in fiscal 26 for the construction work. So this project isn't just about the physical plant like an exterior, like the exterior pre preservation project was. So it's about how we operate in the physical space and how patrons use the library and what services and activities we're offering in response to community needs and all of that's been changed by the pandemic. Um, the library has, is a 20,000 square foot building, um, so it's very big, but the staff was concentrated in a very small area, and so um, the, the last renovation also simply didn't plan enough office and workspace. So that was a critical need, and that was the major driving force for when we submitted this application. Um, so one of the concepts we planned to investigate was enclosing some alcoves in the public areas of the building in order to make additional workspace for staff. Um, and last year we were able to make that a reality in, um, to meet the occupancy standards during the pandemic. Um, we had to, DPW um, enclosed the three alcoves to make office space and, um, and that was all paid for from the CARES Act. It was about $3,000 in materials and the DPW staff, facility staff did the work came out really great. If you haven't been in, take a look. It's, um, they, they look like they were always part of the original building. So that work um, did a lot towards meeting our staff space needs, but it didn't address all of them. But we need time when we're operating under normal circumstances, normal conditions, in order to assess just how far it went in meeting our needs. And the same is true for patron use of the library. We're still in the middle of the pandemic and it's changed how patrons use the library. Um, our circulation numbers are good since we reopened in May. And I'm happy to say we're still the second busiest library on the Cape. Um, but you know, we're not at pre-pandemic levels. Um, we were getting there in December and we're probably 75 to 80 percent of normal um, circulation, which is really good. Um, but you know, now with this current wave, um, things are changing. Uh, what we're seeing is that people haven't been coming in and staying like they would, doing, uh, you know, staying as long on the computers or studying, doing research, whatever. Um, they most come in to make a quick trip to pick things up. That was changing, you know, as time has gone on, like as the fall went on, and, and we're seeing more people staying longer. But again, with the um, current surge, it's going back down. So what I'm saying is things are not, we're not normal yet, and we're not going to be. Um, our book groups and uh, other um, other groups for adults came back inside and um, pe pe back in person. I mean, and people were very happy with that. Um, and um, but 
and attendance has been really good, but there are still people that aren't ready to do things like that for you know extended period um, for discussions and all. Um, the the Montemoy Regional School District um, in September they restarted their um, they do a community bus that goes to the libraries and community centers in both towns from the middle school, and uh, so it brings the kids right there. They don't have to change buses or need special permission from the parents. They just get on this bus. Um, and that's been great, but you know, throughout the fall, numbers were slow in the beginning, and then as uh, vaccination, uh, children could be vaccinated, it started to increase and, and back to more normal levels. But again, we're still not there. And uh, for young children, our story times and other programs just came back inside. Um, they, they've been operating outside all through the fall and December. So they just started last week, and um, so I think it, it, what we're, we're not gonna know what normal operations is. Um, so I, I think my point in telling you all of this is that to say that moving the interior reconfiguration project to fiscal 25 and 26 is a good thing. Um, we recognize the critical needs the town has in trying to accommodate the backlog of projects caused by the pandemic. So, so pushing the our project back a year, that helps the town but it's not a selfless act, it helps us. Um, we need a year post-pandemic, which it seems like who knows when that is gonna be, right? <laughs> um, um, to, to assess how things are, and I'm hopeful that fiscal 23 will be a more normal year, but I think it'll really be fiscal 24, and then we'll see how things have changed, what patterns of behavior have changed and solidified, um, you know, what community needs are and what people want in library services and how the building's operating for staff when we have everyone back in the building again. So um, by the time that we do this assessment and develop plans in fiscal 25, we'll have completed our next strategic plan and that's also key because those service priorities and, um, will be important in determining what changes are needed in the interior configuration of the building. So um, we appreciate the support this committee's had for the project and and I heard at previous meetings there was, seemed to be some concern expressed about why this project was being push, pushed back. Like, um, and I, I just wanna let you know, we're not being shortchanged. We didn't request this like under duress. This is, is, um, this is something that it's in, the, it's in our interest and in the community's and taxpayers' interest to wait till we see exactly how things have changed and where we are. Um, so we're not spending money on until we know that. Go ahead, Brian. So I have a question, because first of all, I'm, I'm like a huge fan of the library and everything that you do over there. And it, I think it's a lifeline resource in this community. We talk about our seniors an awful lot. To me, it's one of the fundamental things that's critical for our senior citizens. And access to the library, availability, the ability to, to access the library, and also the resources available are critical. This has bothered me for some time, because it's been on the books for a long time. The, the thing that concerns me the most is that on your requisition, you have it marked as desirable. And I would think that many seniors like me, I've entered the senior citizen community a few years ago, you know, we would view this not as desirable, but it's really important. That, that space, I couldn't agree with you more. It, it will benefit from reconfiguration. Um, and it, it's funny you say that because I remember when I first built my house, one of the things I dreamt of doing was retiring and walking down to the, the library so I could read the papers at my leisure, just sit and read all these out-of-state papers. I, I think this is a desirable thing. I, I, all the people I talk to in this community view the library as a vital resource, and when it was closed, it was back-breaking for many people. So I'd like you to explain the, the connotation of desirability rather than something that's really, you know, a critical, a critical okay. function. Okay, so the reason, it, the reason I put desirable is it's not critical to us right now for fiscal 23, like this is not, I think if we had the money for next year, you know, we wouldn't be spending it wisely. So um, will it, I think it will move up in priority. I understand isn't that part of what we would do next year? You know, if, if would we change that priority at well, some point? That, that's the ongoing struggle with what, what is meant by uh, the recent changes to the charter. So I think to the member's questions, the year in which it's needed what prioritization would you give it for that purpose? Oh, because we don't know okay. what's going to be allowed. I, I thought for I understood this like was. That. I understood this was to be what priority was it now? 
So I'm sorry, I don't have the drop down menu. What are the other two? So choices? yeah, the, uh, the priorities are number one, legally required. Yeah. Number two, essential. Number three, enhancement. Yeah, and think, number four, desirable. Well, I think it'd be an enhancement. Yeah. I mean, unless we can't, unless they, you know, not predicting how things would change. Could it be um, essential at some point? I don't know. Like it, what what things were lacking. Like I know there are some things we're lacking, but our ideas on what that is will depend on <clears throat> depend on the future. I, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I, um, I would say to you that the constituency that you serve would view this with a higher degree of importance than you're, uh, you're respectfully assigning to it. Um, I think to downplay it is to potentially give it a kiss of death. I'd like that not to happen because I know the people that use this library. Yeah, I would think of the minimal uh, enhancement would be at the, at the very minimal. Yeah, and I think, that, I think that's understated. Start with enhancement. I, yeah. I genuinely okay. think that's I didn't realize it was a, you know, like a permanent assignment. <laughs> no, it's not. We, we don't know yet. You don't know, okay. To see it but to, it's to be sure, I should. It, it's flexible, but we think you should step it up. Yeah. So the, o the other thing is. You can update the form in just a second. You've been in front of us a lot over the years, and you've always downplayed Everything. the amount of work that you've put into the library personally, okay? From the electrical system to whatever. And I think your, your work doesn't go away from our understanding of the success of the library. And I think, Brian, you're 100% right. This, this is the type of thing that you're gonna have, it has to be done. I mean, the facility is not matching the demand. Right. And why not? I mean, it, it's not a foreign language. You're not talking about we're not talking about the network. We're not talking about the physical, what we went through with the electricity and so forth. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how the building is in use. And I think we hear a lot <laughs> about buildings not functioning the way they should be or a better way for a building to function. We hear it all the time. And there are buildings that we address every time we meet. And we question why, and there's no good answer. You've addressed the issue that the building is not meeting the requirements of the population, whether it's currently or the way the population is changing. And you've got an, a, a way to fix it. I, I don't have a problem with it. I think that's a wonderful analysis, and you're presenting it to us. And I think Brian hit the nail on the head by upgrade the value of this request. And again, it's a department asking for something not essential, but enhancement. And I think when you drop it to desirable, it's like saying, you know, if I took the parking spaces that are next to the building and I made the town administrator take the first spot, the assist assistant town administrator take the second spot, rather than handicap, handicap, handicap. Well, it's desirable. It's not essential. I just think the request is is I'm good with the request. Modest and understated. Okay. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate all your thoughts. Um, I, I I was thinking more in terms of why that we could wait because I think we need to wait to make sure what we are planning for, you know, really meets people's needs. But I agree with everything you said. I think that we see, what we see now, um, you know, I've been talking to Joe in, in department head meetings, like I do not want to see us go back to curbside service. And if we had to within the building, like during this surge, and we had to shrink within the building and just uh, staff the circulation desk and so people could still come in and check out, that would be my goal if it ever came to that. But, but that's just your basic circulation service and the library is so much more than that. And I right. think that's what I'm hearing you say. I, I feel like for us, for our community members, especially we've had a, a new surge of people moving here during the pandemic full time, um, places like the library, and I, we're not alone, but um, are where people make connections with other people and develop right. their roots in the town and that's important. I think that's, we all benefit from that, that we're not just a bedroom community, that we're actually a community, not just a 
Yeah, yeah. And I think your request goes beyond what should temporary. I mean, this is a long-term view mm -hmm. of how that building should be used. Okay. Yes. It, it's like, you know, let's do it. I mean, if, if the library has been very patient uh, and the community has been very patient, but removing the library from this community would be tragic. It needs to be addressed because this community is using it or will use it more than ever. I, there's no doubt in my mind, people are aging into your service. What you have is invaluable. It needs to be addressed. It, it, this elevate this has to be elevated. Well, let me ask you. I think we did this in the past, ladies. You can, you. you I know you guys were there. And I, I, I know Jenny was there too. Um, CC, uh, CCA, CC, CPC, Community Preservation. Yeah, CPC money. Yeah. Does this fall into CPC? Money? Well, th thank you. I was going to uh, discuss that, and and first, let me say I appreciate what the. Uh, committee has just said, and I appreciate, just like John earlier, Ginny is of that same ilk, uh, very collaborative, uh, and, and helpfully very mindful of the overall operation of the town. Uh, and I noticed in her narrative that she indicated that it may not be eligible for community preservation. However, I've marked that, and that is something that we would look to, to get a more definitive answer from community preservation ahead of that year's cycle of applications. Well, because there's nothing more historic and beneficial to the town than our library. Um, and if I, I know that historic typically tends to get to exterior of buildings when you're talking about the Secretary of the Interior Standards or the Secretary of State and the Commonwealth. Um, however, uh, I'm using the word historic in the sense that it's irreplaceable. Uh, there is only one Brooks Library that we have, and that's the only building that we have dedicated to it. So it is something that we could contemplate that the funding source comes from community Well, I think what, what we've done in the past, and I think you and I are the only ones that were here when we did it, and the ladies were with us, we went supporting their request. We were in the audience in front of CPC supporting their effort and their request and answered questions financially on their behalf and whatever I forget that that was critical that was for the exterior preservation project. okay and we and it worked whether it was really historic it whether after it, several years. it was maintenance or historic we, preservation it after several years. we woke yeah, somebody up you. yes it was, a, it was a fight <laughs> okay yes. we woke somebody up yes. and my, my yes. point is there we've got to find a revenue opportunity a revenue stream to make this happen, right. okay? So it's not a dead issue. I want it to be on the on the plan, not the budget. Good, well the, said, Mr. Chairman. The plan, yep. it should be on the plan. And I think during the hiatus, when town meeting approves the plan, the budget. budget, we get you guys together and figure, let's look at opportunities, and Joe will tell us, does it fit into the requirements of CPC request? Because certainly one, they have the ability to come up with this type of money. We're not talking about, sorry. Well, I just want to add, because I, I, I don't want to put pressure on CPC because we are talking about the interior of the building. And for me, and, I, and I've read Ginny's uh, responses to other grants that may not be available, but what I'm struck by with this application and, and the, the way that it's been managed by our library director is she relied upon, I'm always gonna mix it up now, but CARES Act money when it was available to make sure that the library could operate safely for patrons and staff, which was a, a way for us to forestall this program. I look at that effort for interior modifications of that building no different than I'm gonna have to do for all of our buildings in the future. And that is make sure are our buildings safe for the next pandemic uh, or for the next health consideration or anything else that may come along. And I think Ginny, as she often is, is at the forefront of that discussion before it's really coming up. So it may not be CPC, but it may be other grants that are available. Because we're looking at this not only from an enhancement to the building, as we've called it, but really an enhancement for the safety and security of our patrons and our staff and a more efficient operation. And so that really touches on all the bases that you want a capital program request to hit upon. 
Well, I think with your input and your effort, you can make it work. Okay. And last but not least, I need to put out there on the record that our library director, uh, knowing that I wanted to have my, my laptop accessible, not having the technology yet, believe it or not, for me to use my town laptop on the network, I asked for a hotspot, and not only did the library director bring one over, she looked me up as a user, and I now have this checked out for a period of time. <laughs> so he's um, accountable. <laughs> which I think is fantastic. You got a card? Um, I absolutely. I went to find my card, and she oh, said she knew me, and she looked me up, and I was in the system. So, um, But I just think that's a wonderful that if it story. doesn't get returned, it yes, eventually we deactivate it. And so you <laughs> How much that's, overdue that's the way is we get them back. And now it's on the record that I have Penny, one. What does the account look like? How much is he overdue? <laughs> no, he's not. I believe he's I'm not, up to what date. What I mean is uh, the hotspots, naturally people want to keep them. They give you free internet access. Yeah. There's no, um, so naturally people want to keep them in when, and when that, you know, they may ignore, you know, emails and calls about it. But when you deactivate them, then they come back. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not any good to anyone. I know. There. But for the Sorry. record, I appreciate that collaboration, but also um, she treated me as a customer in the best possible way, and I love that. So. What I'd like to do, Seriously. okay, again, this hiatus in between town meeting and we'll, at least this committee doesn't start really hop in September, October. Maybe in that in between time, we can meet and the committee members can, and Brian will lead the, lead the troop. Go over and look at the look at what the request is Absolutely. physically look like because it makes life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. What we used to do, Joe, and you weren't around at that time. This committee, on requests like for the beaches, mm -hmm. for for docks and whatever these guys use in voting and so forth. We took the community center bus, and we'd have bus trips, yes. and we'd all get on. And we look at what the request was, and certainly this would be a perfect venue Agreed. for this committee to go and look at what do we need to do to make it easier and better for our citizen, for our town citizens, residents to to make it work. So, Joe, just one question: um, What you were saying a few minutes ago made me think. Are you thinking this could be something for these opera funds or? Um, looking in the direction of our finance director, I don't believe so because no, it's okay. not that kind of infrastructure. Okay. Um, but what I'm talking about is trying to emphasize why, uh, when we look at our building, so, so it's somewhat unfair for you, you know, you, it shouldn't be that you're left alone taking care of the library, and I hope you don't feel that you are yeah. because that's the yeah. partnership of administration. Sure. But I have a responsibility to look at all of our buildings and say, are they healthy, are they safe, mm -hmm. are they efficient? Um, and so it's that mindset that okay. there may be funds elsewhere that we can uh, rely upon. W who knows? We may be able to craft a message that matches with community preservation. Okay. You know, she, Ginny, has worked with different hats on during her tenure as head librarian or whatever director of the library. And, you know, she's got a tool belt and <laughs> everything else. Not anymore. And, and she made everything work. And she still came to us and yep. presented things perfectly. So I have no doubt that whatever. I want to get it on as these, as these sure. hold, holding positions. And we'll, we can find the methodology of funding mm -hmm. her request. Yep. Okay, thank you. So, Joe, I should resubmit the same form with um, different... Make some changes, send it to me, and okay. I'll keep it in All the right, record. thank you. Yeah, change All the, right. uh, yep. basically change the priority. Really? I also have to say, though, centralized maintenance was one of the, you know, uh, one of the best things that happened in the you 21 it. years I did. You know, we I got did. you what you needed. I told you. <laughs> yep. Thank Thanks, you so Jenny. Much. Oh, Jenny, here you go. Oops. Right, so, Mr. You. Chairman, um, thank you, ladies. Perhaps before the uh, thank, you. thank you, folks. Thank before you. our uh, Channel 18 station manager comes over, <laughs> if, if he wanted to, first of all, again, apologies to Jamie. I told her we'd be quick. Um, but I also tell you that um, Jamie's application, everything about what the station man, uh, excuse me, channel 18 manager is going to speak to, is the simplest thing that we can talk about. Because what she has is an ongoing, uh, well-maintained plan of uh, either, either utilizing equipment for transparency purposes for meetings, or updating that equipment, and equally as good. There's a dedicated funding source for that, which is our cable fund. 
And I'm going to start out by trying to embarrass Jamie with positive statements, and that is to say that the cable fund that we enjoy, uh, the town most recently just engaged in our renegotiation process. The 10-year agreement has been struck with Comcast, and the reason why it went so well is because Jamie was tasked to lead that effort, and she did a phenomenal job. So for me, this application is for her to bear the fruit of what she accomplished. Having Great said that, the floor is, I will yield the floor if I could, Mr. Chairman, to our director. Um, just the, the one capital item that I have is um, $66,470, and that is to continue to either upgrade equipment or expand our hearing room spaces. Um, this meeting is nice because it's during the daytime, but if you've ever attended an evening meetings, you know that sometimes there's something happening in the small hearing room, there's something happening here, and people have been fighting for hearing room space, especially now that we're back in person. Um, so I would like to use this fund to either expand to uh, a spot at public safety or the cultural center if that trial is ever expanded. So this would just allow Caleb, myself, and hopefully by the end of this month, a part-time videographer to car start covering more meetings uh, with video and audio equipment. I have a question. When I turn on my TV, <laughs> I get channel 18. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any way I could get that program in high definition? So part of our 10-year contract that we recently just signed with Comcast and the Board of Selectmen just approved uh, three weeks ago, we will be a designated HD station. So from the time of the Board of Selectmen appointing um, government, because where there's public, there's education and government that all falls under that one 10-year contract. We now have 36 months to get together with Comcast and make our station high definition. Now, if you are a Roku, Roku user, R-O-K-U, or an Apple TV user, you can watch us live and on demand in high definition, and it is really nice. That's how I'm watching the station at home in Dennis. So, so yes, with more to come. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, in Three the future. Years. So it still has to say, has to come through in analog and not digital. We're currently analog, correct. Okay. And that is because of the limitations that Comcast imposed on us. The school is analog and yep. currently public access is analog. Because the picture quality will be much better when you get to high Oh, depth. you're going to be able to see every <laughs> pore. <laughs> The uh, 66000 that's requested, is that part of the total package? In other words, it's a one-shot deal? So I believe for the five-year plan, that brings you up to date. Was that correct? Let me just pull it up. Uh, yes, words, because uh, last year I did have some warrant articles that were approved. And I'm trying to do a replacement schedule, so the Griffin Room first, small hearing room second, the Studio Community Center, and then we'd go back to Public Safety and Cultural Center. So we would have to update this uh, this location or this equipment again in the next. Okay, so five the five-year request is 171,000. I'm looking. I'm adding across. Adding right. across. And like the second year is only 4,000, and then. The Oh yes, 2024, yes, I do see that. That would be um, replacing some field production equipment so when we go do the town band or we're doing something out and about around town that we replace those field equipment cameras. Well, again, we get to this issue, Joe, yeah. about are we gonna bump in next year and just say, well, we're requesting $4,000 and I'll tell you, take it out of the operating budget. And so Jamie and I had that discussion and that's one of the things that I struggle with. Um, because Jamie has a dedicated funding source, uh, if you will, um, which is a wonderful thing, and again, is the, is the fruit of negotiations. The way that I look at the Channel 18 request is there are two categories, that's main control equipment versus uh, equipment meeting rooms and field equipment. And so when you look at that going across, the $4,000 in one year is a part of a five-year plan that exceeds $50,000. In other words, I would argue that you cannot accomplish the plan, the project probably is the better way to say it, now I'm confusing myself.
yourself. Plan is what we're talking about for the five years. Budget is what we're talking about for the one year. Project is what is encompassed within it. So she has a project that co covers five years that totals more than $170,000. Correct. One of the items within that, given how she's budgeted, right. is under $50,000. And I don't, just like the I don't have a problem right. with that. Okay. Now, again, that's my statement today. Uh, I hope not to be challenged legally because then we're going to have a bigger discussion. And when I say legally, I don't suggest this committee. I mean others. What's, what is the revenue stream from Comcast to Harwich? It's a percentage of uh, subscriber fees. So the it revenue derived. Yeah. It changes. Uh, but two hundred dollars a month? No, uh, no, no. It, it no. It was um, about ninety thousand last year, wasn't it? More than that, I believe. It's tens of thousands. They pay us quarterly, um, and. Harwich has had really good subscriber numbers. Historically, we hover around 8,500 people for the past 10 years. So we've been getting a, con a consistent amount of money, and we don't usually spend all of it. So yeah, I need to know what we're so if, know what if you look at the bottom of your um, budget form, uh, th that's one of the few numbers I was able to update. Uh, you can see there under public education and government grant, what I um, am training myself not to call PEG uh, or public access, but that's the grant in question. And you can see what we have, um, it corresponds to the dollar amounts in the program. So we have at least that much, if not more, each year to cover it. We can provide you, Carol and I can provide the committee as we get into, and this is my segue to the next discussions after this presentation of next meetings, of what fund balances we can use, what funds we can use, what the balances may be at a certain time, so we'll have more of that in the future meetings. Okay. And my question is, basically, these requests are self-funded? Yes. A hundred percent. How about your salary? Now? It also comes from the cable fund, but not See? my benefit package. Okay, so basically, right. Joe, if you're looking at 190,000 funding, Correct. We're taking, and that doesn't, it's going to be an overrun if you throw your salary in there. And there's 171. Is, is in fact the amount of money we receive greater than the 190? I didn't understand the question as you posed it. Could you try again? Let me try again. Sure. Thank you. You've given me five years, you've given us five years of expenses. And down the bottom, you have five years of revenue. No. no. Not five no, years no. of revenue. That's, that's, that's five that's years of available funding yeah. from public education and government grant. And are you saying that cable is in that category? That, that is yeah. cable. That is cable. Yeah, I'm trying not to call it simply cable fund because it's my understanding there's a more accurate. So my uh, question, yeah. again, first was how much revenue does the cable, whatever deal we have, how much do we get per year? I don't have the number off the top of my head. There's right. over a million dollars in that fund right now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you guys, I, I, I'd like to know. So, uh, as I just said a moment ago, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, yeah. As we update this document and as I present the booklet, that's absolutely information we'll provide because we want town meeting as well as you to know that. Well, uh, you know, if uh, you look at this, you're telling me that we will take in some source of 188,618, correct? Yeah, it depends that's, on that's the looking. expenses there, that 186, that. It's funding summary. Yeah. That's money that's sent to us. Right, what the, what expenses. I'm taking, it is what I'm expensive. taking from that, Mr. Chairman, is the funding source yeah. that we will rely upon in part for those five I'm years includes the cable, quote unquote, cable fund or public education and government grant right. that we get from Comcast. Right. And we will use that uh, to support every request of um, Channel 18 for each year. And where does that money come from? The fund that we just talked about that we will get the full balance to you at a future No, no, rate. no. Where does the 188 come from? From the public education and government grant known as the cable fund grant from Comcast. Paid Could that be considered a revenue stream to the town. It is a revenue stream. Where's the expense? 
this is the I think expense. We'd be, I think we'd be better off relying upon the finance director who can answer better because what You're I'm not getting, me the what I'm getting tripped up on is the word revenue. Right. When I think of revenue, I think of uh, receipts received from customers coming in and buying a dog license or things like that. Um, it's not revenue in that sense. It is funds provided by a negotiated contract right. that is required by, I think, federal code to be earmarked for the purposes of public education but and government. Somebody send us a check. Yes, that's the, that's the quarterly payment that Jamie made reference to. That and that's, quote-unquote, revenue to the town. I understand the usage. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, quote unquote, yep. it's the revenue. Where do you come up with expense? Well, that's what the total request of what Jamie's requiring or requesting is $188,000. No, she's requesting 170. Plus 17. You add those two numbers. Okay, you so get you're saying. Okay, so it's covered by the revenue stream. Correct. So and that's that, the expense. That's the revenue. It could be, but, but the revenue is in excess of 188, though. I understand that, yeah. but my, my concern is to cover this page, yeah. the, it's covered yeah. by the revenue stream down the bottom. Correct. Okay. The revenue stream is much larger than 188, though. It has to be. Yeah, and that revenue is derived from your cable bill. I think it's 3% of your cable bill goes right. to this. So that's what it that's is. That's a thousand that's on mine. <laughs> it's right on your cable bill. Yeah. Tell me about it. I know. And the reason we have so much fun funds in the cable fund is historically Harwich has been a very good steward of that money. Uh, Jill Mason was previously the Channel 18 director and she was uh, very tech savvy. Uh, she was able to maintain equipment herself. I do all my own IT stuff. I repair things. I install things. So I think we've saved a lot of money on you know installation and service contracts because we've been very good stewards of the money. The school has to come before the Board of Selectmen and, sol and solicit any funds, and then they have to put that on. Now, we, we are tied to the cable company. We certainly are, but we only have that one cable company. And there's some legislation right now, because everybody's cord cutting, um, and towns and local municipalities will be able to continue getting subscriber fees from uh, Internet um, providers, customers. The PEG account is like a CPC account. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So you pay a percentage of your property taxes, go to CPC. Percentage of your cable bill goes to PEG. Well, 7-1. I just want to know what we get in from the... In other words, yeah, I know what you want. how much more yeah. do we have right. that will cover this? Yeah. If those funds are only used for this application, right. how much more delta yeah. is there available? Should the town say, okay, we're looking at the cable? Whatever. Well, if, if I may, if, you, sure. if you're looking to rely upon I'll just use the shorthand cable fund right. for anything other than the allotted purposes under the contract. We can't do that. Exactly. That, that's why it's understood to be a dedicated resource or a dedicated funding source, as I like to call it, for cable-related appropriations, even though cable is somewhat outdated. Did and I say if that I'm accurately? saying if yeah. I'm saying we're collecting five million dollars a year, for the sake of argument, do we have the ability to spend? Yeah. The five million dollars. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my thing is that if there's overruns, the town doesn't have to worry about it because it's in a dedicated right. account. Yeah. That's my fear. Yeah. Should the technology change or we need more? What do you got? So the fund <laughs> took in just under three hundred thousand dollars last year. <clears throat> and I was incorrect, it has nine hundred and eighty two thousand dollars currently as a balance. So and that's and that's um, considering all the capital projects that were authorized and that's funding all of them, that's funding the budget for the entire year for the Channel 18 department. So Channel 18 fund kind of thing, let's call it, has about a million bucks. Yes. 900,000 and change. And we're looking- Very solvent. It's liquid. Uh, and we're really looking at spending 
whatever the million million eighty eight uh one hundred and eighty eight thousand. Correct. Over five years. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so the revenue stream per year basically is three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand and if you took another four years on top of the request. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I'm just saying how much better can the cable application and what we have in the town, how much better could it be should we need it? Well, I, I think to that point, that's why I was uh, at the beginning of my comments referencing the fact that Jamie was at the forefront of the negotiations. We didn't have anyone better, uh, with all due respect to the attorney that we used, because Bill August was excellent. He is excellent. But J there was no one better than Jamie to articulate to uh, Comcast the things that we would like to see, and she did a masterful job of negotiating. That means we got some things we wanted, we didn't get everything we asked for, but in the end, she was making the case for the best possible outcome you're, for the town. You're, that, that was the catch-all. For the town, not for the residents. For the residents of this town. The rates that we're being charged? So It's like negotiating with the phone company. You're not gonna change the rates of the phone company in the town. Correct. My point is, the negotiations you had is what the cable company is having with the town of Harwich mm -hmm. and the use of cable by the town of Harwich, not by the residents of the town. So if I pay a fundamental fee, of elementary fee of $40 a month, that sounds like 1956. Yeah. But like $240 a month. I get your you, deal. You hit it on the head. Yeah. If I'm yeah. paying 240 that has nothing to do with the negotiation you had with No, we can't negotiate fees, but we did negotiate a, a senior citizen discount, and I have that information if anybody's interested in it. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, the, to the question about high definition, Jamie had that forefront. We didn't yield on the position. I think the only thing we discussed was who gets it and I've made the statement and Jamie was good enough to go along that channel 18 gets it uh, to me that has to be a pelt so to speak not to use a, a hunting phrase but that's something that we can point to to say there's a reason why channel 18 is high definition and a big part of that is because of what Jamie literally brought to the table uh, and what she scored for the town in those discussions but you do you have to provide it as an as the provider of the service Okay. I'm Do you sure. technically have to accept an HD signal and pump out an HD signal? So right now we're recording in HD and I am taking that signal and I'm downgrading it to analog to give to Comcast. Right. Um, I'm ready to go HD. I've been ready to go <laughs> HD since 2016. So you take it in? So I take it in. I would, I would actually be eliminating a piece of equipment that dumbs it down to analog. Okay, that's and then Comcast would be then subs uh, pers providing the other HD equipment to send the signal to your house and everyone else's houses in high definition. Uh, currently, the piece of equipment that is dumbing things down, they don't make anymore. We can't get a new one. You can get a refurbished one, but you can't get a new one, So, which is why we have signal quality issues. And I baby it. It's up high. Nobody can touch it. A fan's blowing on it constantly. <laughs> Okay. That's, that's not a joke. That's yeah, real. But, <laughs> but when am I going to see high definition in my home? Within three years? Within 36 months. Yeah. Okay. So it. You won't be around for that. So. <laughs> okay. I'm going to so try to do it as quick they as couldn't possible. Do it, yeah, but I, I, if I could, I, I don't want anyone to diminish the victory. And I mean that. Uh, the fact that it's only going to be within 36 months is a good thing. Because the other prospect was we, we wouldn't have achieved it. Uh, so it would have been greater than 36 months. So I want to make other sure towns on the Cape are HD? That, that one of the messages that comes out of this is what we gained. None, currently. Okay. Uh, we were the one, of the one of the first towns yep. to solidify that's our that's, contract. That's a good so. move. That's yep. So we're ahead of most municipalities at this point. Sounds better without a well, matter of considering it's recorded. Yes. There's no competition. There would have been if Verizon pumped up and came out with Oh, don't get me started on that. I, we I would have more funding. More. If, we, right. if Verizon provided cable services here, we yep. would be seeing more subscriber fees. I came from a town that had four cable providers wow. plus the town providing broadband. So okay. uh, Jamie makes the most of what's available for sure. Well, they're monopolies. Which yep. Now there's no... No place else to get it. 
right. We're good. So all I would say then is, uh, again, uh, this is separate from you, so if you want to go back, you're right. Thank you, Jamie. You are My safe spot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Um, is that, you know, the next steps for the committee, uh, I've said it to some of you in conversation, but I'll put it out there. Uh, for many reasons, not the least of which is the most recent surge of COVID-19, uh, I am off schedule. Town meeting is in 109 days. You'll find out, Martha, that I do that at every meeting that I get to is to remind uh, that we're closing in. So I have missed charter mandated deadlines. However, the benefit of that is, um, you know, we're using the exigencies that we know exist you know, with the pandemic. We are still striving towards a town meeting to occur on Monday, May 2nd, 2022, at the community center, indoors like we've traditionally done it. Um, the next steps would be for me to come back to this committee at least one more time. And at that point, we hope to have at least one more member present. Mr. Bosworth couldn't make it today because of a work emergency, but at least have six of you, if not a seventh member, be able to join uh, for the stage of finalizing the funding and then settle on the joint meeting with the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen. Well, five is, equ is the quorum. No, five is equivalent. What I'm trying to show is Bring that, everybody in. Yeah, that you, know, you, you have six members, which is excellent. And if uh, we can get you a full compliment just to have that, that's always good. When are we voting okay. on each? So that would be the next uh, question to all the committee members. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to lengthen your meeting right now, but I would ask if each of you could reach out to Alan Powell uh, with any number of dates that either work or don't work, she'll be able to turn that around very quickly into your next meeting. Um, and so really, I, it's I would up, imagine it's uh, it wouldn't be any earlier than next week. Uh, and again, next week is truncated with the uh, holiday. I suggest you check your calendar and give us dates. All right, so I mean, Ellen, it, it Ellen ain't going to happen that. without you, Joe. Thank you, Ellen. We'll do that. She'll she'll reach out. You to guys you agree? Folks. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm very flexible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're all. Yeah. Well, I have work. a question. Mm -hmm. When we meet again, um, will we have a good feel for which items CPC has approved? Um, I hope to have it by then. My understanding is they were going to meet uh, this evening, um, but because of uh, uh, the passing of Mr. McFarland and out of deference to one of their members, they've held off. Uh, I'm in constant communication with the uh, chairman. Uh, I know if nothing else, we can tell you what they've already approved because uh, that is available, so I can add that to the materials. Okay. Um, what I'm trying to get to is the final form of what I've been promising you. Again, I'm working off of um, one spreadsheet uh, in a document that's seven spreadsheets, and that's how much information I want to provide. Okay. Community preservation is one of those spreadsheets. So. Yeah, because that's important to I have. I guess that. We're, we're, Absolutely. We're, what we've done in the past, and I don't know if it makes any difference now, is literally requests one through 30, whatever they are, and which ones you think sh were your recommendation to be funded. Yep. Yeah, thank you. First. Chris. Yep. And then we vote on the 27 of 30 that you recommend. Right. Thank you. And then if there's any differences, we negotiate it. We negotiate Sure. And, and if I could, then the last item, as I uh, said in my uh, earlier message today, what I've added to the funding summary page, uh, or, or table, I should say, is uh, ARPA funds. Now, that's because they're available. That's because we heard about the final rule um, it may impact upon this plan. I truly don't know at this date and time if it is going to, but I want to just emphasize that we may be able to rely on those or I think more likely we may have some items that may be removed from the plan because we have funds available to do something and we have the final rule that says an appropriation is not necessary. So I just want to put that concept out there, but it is extremely early in the development stage of that and very preliminary. I wanted you to hear it directly from me. Okay, so there's no timeline with you guys. You and the select. Well, we're waiting for, for things to happen, yeah. We're waiting for this committee to approve the capital budget to hold a public hearing, yeah. waiting for Joe for an operational budget so we can start deliberating on that. That's something different. Yeah, so there are a lot of things. The operational budget is still on track. Uh, the charter requires me to do a comprehensive uh, operational budget and budget message uh, in early February. So mercifully, I'm still on track for that. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see any, any hazards or any obstacles in presenting to, to the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee. I mean, do you guys see anything? Other than it's, it's, it's past due, that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me that. That's the only obstacle. Yeah. You can fix that. I can't fix it. Pardon? I can't. I know you can't. And uh, Brian, can you, since you're... No, I can't. I don't think anybody on the Finance Committee is that adept that they could fix the time factor. The fact is that I think everybody's liber you know, working on the more liberal circumstances and more flexible. I mean, it just has to be. It just has to be. As long as, as, long as we're ready, I mean, if modify the, you know, the, the calendar or whatever that we've been living under, which becomes an obstacle. As long as they're ready for, for the meeting and the approval. Well, it, it cuts down on deliberation and examination. That's the thing, Rich. You know, if we, we should have been looking at this capital budget for the last two or three weeks. We haven't. My committee has not. So it just cuts, it compresses that por portion of examination. But the issue is, should you have met as the finance committee, you should have brought some of the questions that you've had as committee members to this meeting. We had nothing to, to discuss. We had no you capital have, budget. You, but you've had you've had requests and so forth. No, we haven't. We have no, we've we had. Just, we just went two weeks ago. We did half of this. But that's it's not approved. It's not approved. Nothing's been voted just on. Just discussions. Yeah, but I can't discuss what might not be happen. No. I have to have a public hearing, and that's after okay. we get an approved budget. Uh -huh. Would you like a motion to to adjourn? Yes, please. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn second at 332 thank you <laughs> good